everybody. Welcome to another live stream here on youtube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. That is me. I am Johnny Chiodini. I hope you are well, and I'm sorry in particular to Mr. Tom for the win, who says, every time that music makes me jump, ha ha. Sorry about it. Um, yeah, I kind of, well, I mean, it's quite, it, it, um, it kind of, uh, it loops on my OBS, um, so it never starts in the same place on the stream. So anyway, um, Repercussion says, Woolly content to be here. This stream is an absolute must. That's a stretch. That's a stretch. Anyway, Monster Noodle says, hello, it's my birthday. Happy birthday, Monster Noodle. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I hope you're doing very well, in fact. Lots of love to you. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, what are we painting today? Uh, we're painting a big woolly mammoth from the A Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. A game I do not play, um, but you may remember um, a time ago I was painting a uh, Norse team for Blood Bowl for next season of the league that I co-commission. So um, I thought they need a team bus and I thought what better bus than a big bloody mammoth. So I got hold of a mammoth and we're going to paint it. We're going to start off by dry brushing a lot of uh, lot of cream. We're going to straighten with the pale sands today. We're going to dry brush a lot of cream onto this fur in particular uh, so that we can slap some contrast paints over it and start strong. Anyway, how is everyone? It's I realise it's Tuesday, but I'm going to ask you anyway. How was your weekend? Mine was fine. Um, what did I do? I know I did some things. What did I do on the weekend? Let me look at my phone. That's weird. My short-term memory is quite bad at the minute. Um, shout out to anyone else who uh, whose short-term memory is bad when uh, when their mental health isn't great, because that's me to a T. I hung out with some kittens on Saturday. That's right, and then some friends came over to see the kittens. And then on Sunday I did some hobbying. Oh, and then I watched The Doctor regenerate. I'm not a Whovian, really. I've never really watched Doctor Who. But a friend was having a sort of soiree. I we'll call it a soiree. It was basically showing a bunch of classic episodes of Doctor Who in the daytime. And then we watched The Doctor regenerate in the evening. At which point a bunch of the people in the room were like, It's just not good writing! Because in fairness, that episode was bananas. But it was a, it was a lovely evening, nonetheless. So that was... Uh, that was my weekend, anyway. Um, Timothy Thomas has done a super chat saying, Hey Johnny and LSP, it's just a quick question. Is it a permanent move to Tuesdays for streams, or is it just for a couple of weeks? Just wondering if I missed an announcement. Also, I hope your week's going well. It's not a permanent move. Um, it just so happens that two weeks in a row, uh, Mondays haven't really worked for me, so I've, I've had to change it to, uh, to Tuesday. But no, I will be returning to Monday streams on Monday, unless something else happens. But no, I would... Uh, basically, I would definitely announce if there was going to be a permanent shift, but uh, suffice to say, there is not. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Rob J says, I definitely did things, but I only remember catching up on the Oxventure podcast. Air superiority was a wild ride. Yep, pretty much. Oh, Happy Bob says, it's 1.32am here in Australia and happens to be my 41st birthday. I hope you're all well. Happy birthday, Happy Bob. I hope you're having a... Well, I hope you... Wait, is it just starting to be your birthday, or is it sort of the tail end of your birthday? Either way, happy birthday. Hope it's already been great, uh, and continues to be great. Um, well, I guess if it is your birthday, then it's your birthday now, which means it's only just become your birthday. So happy, happy birthday is what I'm trying to say. Goodness me. Anonymous says, bad writing on Doctor Who? Surely not. I thought, I'll tell you what, I thought uh, Jodie Whittaker was great, though. I thought she was very cool. Um, Thomas Ogden's done a super chat saying, Hi, Johnny, love your work as always. Off to see my granddad tomorrow for a few days. Bought him the complete DVD box set of MASH. Such a good show. Delightful. That's going to be some fun watching. Although I've never actually watched it. The only thing I know about it is that Alan Alder's in it because he's also in The West Wing. So there we go. Oh, Ebrel506 says, hello, Skelly Pals. Hope you're doing well. I'm a little under the weather today. Sorry to hear it, pal. I hope that changes very, very soon. Um, mm -mm -mm. Du -du -du -du. Nevermore says, weekend was good. Monday forgot my maids had 
Matt's had oatmeal and four cups of coffee. <laughs> oh, it's Happy Bob's Happy Bob's birthday is only just starting. Well, happy birthday, Happy Bob. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, yeah, and Monster Noodle on the weekend is having friends over for drinks and Mario Kart. Yes, please. Meanwhile, Alex Simkin says, out of curiosity, which classic Doctor Who episodes did you watch? We watched a couple of episodes of Revenge of the Daleks, and then actually after the regeneration, we watched the entirety of The Demons, which was fantastic. It was great fun. Um, and my friend had picked it because he's currently playing uh, The Excavation of Hobbs Barrow, and knew that I'd just finished it, so that was uh, it was nice and thematic. And bananas. Just bananas, but great all the same time. So yeah. Um, Doctor Who. Turns out it's quite good. When it's good. But yeah. <laughs> the nice which says, the nurses. Oh, the nurses. Oh no. Oh god. Oh my god, Colin Lasser says, so glad to just chill out today. Waited three hours at the DMV yesterday, only to be told I didn't have the right form filled out. We'll have to go back later this week. That sucks. That sucks. I'm very sorry. But yeah, just, just, just come on in. Settle yourself down. Let's paint a mammoth. This guy is absolutely massive. Or mammoth, you might say. And then I assume we'll get an influx of people in about an hour, hour and a half, because I think everyone's, oops, um, I think everyone's watching a Hallow stream. Tis a fallow month, the month of October, when everybody's over at yon outside Xboxes things. But it's nice to see you all here anyway. Uh, the nice which says I have two days off and I'm ready to do absolutely nothing. Yes, please, Sarah. That sounds great. I saw on I saw on online that you've been roasted for a lot of work lately, so I know that time off for you is very precious right now. Ah. <sighs> Daniel Triggs says, have you played the, the of some of Ice and Fire Minis game, Johnny? I have not, no. Although I know that um, uh, Duncan Rhodes, praise be his name, Two Thin Coats, is, is into it. Um, and it does seem like fun. But uh, no, I'm kind of... Um, I've got my hands full between like Warcry and Kill Team and, of course... My beloved Blood Bowl. That I haven't actually given it a go. I don't know anyone who plays it, so. Anonymous says, MASH is a bit weird in that show that ran for a lot longer than the active fighting in the actual war did. Technically, the war is still on. It's just a ceasefire. Oh. Well. That's news to me. I did not realise. Stephen Roger Benson says, I joined the Kickstarter, have loads of minis, and have never played it. That sounds like a tabletop Kickstarter, all right. <sighs> probably a witch, says, hi all, hope you have a nice day. Hello to you, probably a witch. Um, have you met our resident confirmed witch, the nice witch? Uh, no, but I hope, you're, I hope you're well. I am having a nice day, actually. I managed to get up at a decent hour. I had a meeting about something, which is quite exciting. Uh, which I can't talk about yet, um, but then I I walked the dog, and then I did some honest to goodness writing. So I'm trying to trying to block out a bit of time every day to do some writing, just to keep my brain ticking over and keep myself happy. And that went quite well. And now I'm painting, and this evening I'll make some dinner. So there we go. Just man bun actually says the audio skipping is extremely annoying. Uh, if you give it, if you give a YouTube a refresh, it should work. Sorry, it was annoying you. But uh, I think it's a YouTube problem, not a Johnny Chiodini problem. God knows we've got enough Johnny Chiodini problems. So there we go, look. I've made the uh, I've made the mammoth look all sort of white and grey now. Or cream and grey, really. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
Ah, Gemma Lee Wood says, Yes, I'm managing to catch a live stream. I went to my parents for Sunday lunch and made a pumpkin pie for dessert. Was lush. That sounds brilliant. I do like a pumpkin pie. I'm not normally into sweet things, but there's just something very comforting about that, about the old... Uh, <laughs> the old, old fucking pumpkin pie. Don't know where that came from, but there we go. I should be studying, as uh, uh, says I've got a midterm today, so I'm trying not to think about it so I don't stress. Right, you just, you park yourself there, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll not do any stressing. We'll just do some, do some honest-to-goodness painting. You can deal with the midterm later. Um, what I'm going to do is, I've not, ah, I've not tried this shade yet. What kind of colour is it? Ooh, it's like a nice dark, cho almost chocolatey brown. That's good. Uh, what we're going to do now is just go into like all of these recessed areas and put some shade in to try and increase the contrast, as it were. Like that. It's a bit messy, but I'm not going to spend loads of time on this, to be honest. It's just something I'm doing just as a bit of... Um, a bit of paint pudding, because sometimes you spend ages and ages and ages painting th some, you know, the same things, and you have to you have to treat yourself to something different, you know. And they say a change is good as a rest. I think it's absolutely true when you're working on a creative project. You've just got to do something a bit different every now and then. Because um, I, despite famously hating to paint big batches of models, I sat down and I did ten of the um, the Votan dwarves, the egg men I've been painting in one go, which is most unlike me, but I got them done. Uh, they're all here. They're currently all just in a tub off their bases. Um, in fact, if I finish painting this early enough, we're going to move on to the bases. I ripped this idea off somebody on Instagram shamelessly, but we're doing moon bases. I got some moulding putty and I poked it with the uh, blunt end of a brush. You can't quite see it on camera, but there's lots of, you can see it a bit there. There's lots of like smaller little dents. So hopefully once it's, um, once they're all painted up, they should look like bits of A or the moon. So that's exciting. Faisal says those look like mini cookies. <laughs> I suppose they do, yeah. Daniel Trigg says moon bases looks like cheese to me. Fair. But again, hopefully the paint will 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 add something. Septimus ten twenty six has done a massive super chat. Thank you very much. That's very very kind. Um, and says three hundred sixty four days ago, I sent in my first super chat. Today, I just want to say thanks for creating a nice place to de stress every week. Here's to another year of LSP goodness. That's so kind, Septimus. Thank you very much. And uh, it's funny you should say it's a nice place to de stress. Because uh, look at that number on the super chat. Like I said, it was very generous. It's also a very nice super chat. Here, here, here. Thank you very much. It's a, a pleasure to have you in chat. Uh, as per usual. It's a pleasure to have all of you in chat, to be honest. Um, yeah, just let's let's just de-stress a bit, shall we? Because um, without actually name-checking any of the shit that's going on, quite a lot of shit going on at the minute. Uh, so it's nice to just sort of... Yeah, what's in? To simmer down and just let it sort of... Just no thoughts, only mammoth, you know? Alex Simkin says moon bases are appropriate for eggs, since in Doctor Who it turns out the moon is a colossal egg. What? Why did no one tell me this? There's so much about Doctor Who that is absolutely, completely off the wall bananas and anytime I mention it to my friends who are like big Whovians or whatever they're like oh yeah oh yeah that thing and it's like what do you mean oh yeah that thing bizarre like um I don't know if you're like aware there are like Doctor Who sort of like audiobooks um that are made by a company called Big Finish turns out uh, quite a few of my well I say three a few uh, literally a few three of my friends write those. So when I was sat there waiting for the doctors to regenerate, uh, two of those three people were there and we're just casually talking about like the stories they've written before and the doctors they've written for and all this kind of stuff. It, it, it's fascinating. 
Because they were watching Doctor Who and like, oh, the writing on this this series, of, you know, it's been a bit of a disappointment, yada, yada, yada. I love classic Doctor Who. And they're writing classic Doctor Who stories. And it's like, but you grew up loving this show and now you're helping dis- decide it? Melody Williams, Melody Williams says, big Finnish audio dramas are awesome. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, I know a couple of, I know a few people who, who write for it, which is fun. Humble brag from me there. Was it even humble? Not really sure. Um, oh, there's quite a lot of mammoth, isn't there? Maybe that'll have to do on the old. You know what? I was thinking to layer up the um, the coat on this this mammoth. We might actually end up doing quite a lot of dry brushing. So, um, so we'll stop. We'll stop adding that shade in there now. The thing is, right, um, this mammoth, it's got a lot of, got a lot of wool on it, I suppose, um, being a mammoth, but also there's loads of leather. There's like leather here and up here and here and across the chest. This is metal at least, but there's loads of leather strapping. So obviously we want, I would like that to be brown, but I don't want the mammoth to be like don't want it to be the exact same shade of brown. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in with Contrast Wildwood, which is a very dark brown. And I'm going to do all that sort of now. And then we'll think about the, the fur. So I've got Contrast Wildwood here. Um, shaking manually like a chump. Just because Wobbletron isn't dead, but Wobbletron has been so... Um, Temperamental recently that I just can't be bothered today. Today is just supremely chill. Anyone got any good jokes about elephants? I'll tell you my I'll tell you my two good jokes about elephants. I warn you though, one of them is an anti-joke, like the bee joke. Uh, the first one is uh, elephant is walking through uh, the jungle and and. Uh, Stumbles across a man. Actually, I've got three. Um, stumbles across a, uh, a man, um, and the man's naked. And the, the elephant looks at him and says, Well, how do you drink with that thing? There you go, that's one. Uh, the second joke, this is the, the anti-joke, so don't worry if you don't laugh. Um, elephant's walking through the jungle and uh, uh, runs, uh, runs across a mouse. Come, comes into contact with a mouse and says, Blimey, you're a bit small, aren't you? And the mouse looks up at him and says... Well, I've been ill lately. Which is funny because the mouse is getting defensive about his size and it doesn't understand that it's the sheer gulf in size between a mouse and an elephant that he's commenting on. Not that the mouse looks thin on account of having recently been ill. Um, and then... Uh, finally... Uh, a man is walking through the jungle this time and uh, goes to a watering hole and it's very, very peaceful um, and he's sort of there just appreciating nature. And then um, into the watering hole there walks uh, an elephant and the elephant, uh, you know, does what elephants do, just trunk in the water, starts having a drink, starts sort of bathing itself and uh, the man's just staying still, just kind of watching all this go on and he sees on the far side of, of this watering hole on the far bank where there's some sun breaking through and, and shining, he sees this, this, this very big turtle uh, climb out of the water and start basking in the sun. He's watching this lovely scene unfold when suddenly the elephant flies into a rage and it stampedes into the water, tramples across the watering hole and smacks the turtle with its trunk. And the, the turtle goes, jish, 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 jish. Uh, skidding across the water and it uh, cracks its shell on a rock and uh, and promptly dies. And the elephant sort of calms down and goes back to drinking and the man approaches this elephant and he says, Hiya, look, I'm sorry to bother you, but um, that was really unexpected. Why, could I ask why why you did that to that turtle just then? And the elephant says, well, it's very simple. That thing bit me on the trunk 30 years ago, and I wanted my revenge. The man says, wow, good memory. The elephant says, yeah, I know. 
Turtle Recall. And they're going to start booing in three. Oh no, Colin Laster liked that one. There we go, Spicy Kitty, the first one out of the gate with a boo. Stephen Roger Benson, Ravy W. <laughs> Dan Kelleher simply says, fuck. Yep, there you go. You're welcome, everybody. It's not it's not so long as to be like a shaggy dog story or, you know, like one of those jokes that's, that where the joke is that it takes forever to tell. And at least it's got a punchline. But it's on the cusp of being annoying, isn't it? Hey, Dan says uh, the second one was the funniest. Emma Vetton says, how dare you make me wake up to that? But Emma, you love puns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, not sorry, Emma. I hope you slept well, though. <laughs> Good morning. Hope you're having a lovely Tuesday. I'm painting the leather straps on a on a woolly mammoth from uh, A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, and then at some point, I'm going to make a little banner that goes between the tusks and says "Go Team." Because uh, it's this is going to be a um, a team bus for my uh, my my Norse team for Blood Bowl, because no matter what the game it's meant to be for, if I'm painting a miniature, it's probably for Blood Bowl. <laughs> Stephen Roger Benson says, "I did appreciate you're meant to presume it will be something about elephants never forgetting, and then it's a turtle pun." It's good, isn't it? A little head fake. Uh, Emma Benton says, I did not sleep well, but it is the last day of work before I go to Seattle to celebrate my first wedding anniversary with my husband. Yes, please. That sounds great. Congratulations to you both. Um, yeah, not having to work for a while sounds great. And uh, Seattle is a lovely place. My partner and I never actually took a honeymoon, but once we eventually do, we're kind of, we are thinking about Seattle. Because we've also got friends in Canada just over the border. So it'd be nice to sort of do a double whammy. Um, things in Seattle I like. There's... Uh, the whiskey bar is good. It is a bar that sells a lot of whiskeys. And apparently... I went When I went in there, they were playing jazz. But it's they're either playing jazz or metal. One of the two. And you never know which they're going to be playing on any night. But next door to the whiskey bar is a dive bar with loads and loads and loads of pinball machines. And they do a mean pickleback and they have sandwiches that are quite good, I guess. Um, yeah, it's a fun city to kind of mooch around in. I spent, because I went there for PAX West. Yes, well, of course it's PAX West. It's in Seattle, Johnny. Um, and... Uh, I mooched around there for a few days, just in the evenings with uh, with a colleague, just finding like nice places to just chill out and have a drink or have a bite to eat. It's it's a charmer, um, and loads of sculpture in Seattle. I've I've found like they're very fond of just big public sculptures, which is very nice. It's always interesting to look at. I'm going to do the leather on this a lot lighter, just for a bit of variation. I think. Ebrel506 says, what about jazz metal? Could be good. I'm sure that exists. I'm sure they've influenced each other, those two genres. <laughs> those two. I make them sound like, like teenage scamps running about a village. Ooh, Emma says, I can't wait. I've never been, but we're going to a spooky after hours event at the aquarium. That sounds great. Um... I'll try and remember the name of that books bookstore as well because it's a good bookstore and it's nice to poke around in. Um, but yeah, oh, there's some lovely stuff. There's a good barbecue joint called I think it's called Meaty Johnson's, which is um, a choice of a name, but that was good. I think that's downtown, like near the convention center. Um, I discovered it when I went to Pax West the second time and just ended up walking around a lot of the time going Meaty Johnson's. Just finding different ways to say the words Meaty Johnsons. So I was popular there, as you can imagine.
Emma says, that, yeah, that's a choice. Ha <sighs> ha. Yep. It's like one of the first times I ever went to the States. So yeah, I went to the cinema with um, with a friend and, and her cousin and we went and saw a film. And then in the lobby afterwards, a guy walked past and he was absolutely like stacked with muscle. Like this guy was like hench. And I went, whoa, that dude looks hard. <sighs> Little did I know. 14-year-old me. Still think about that one. Still keeps me up at night, which is why I'm telling you now. I told you that in confidence, though. Please never mention it. Emma Benton says, Johnny, I didn't know what it meant in the States. If someone looks hard in the UK, it means they look tough. I was 14, I'd just, I'd just discovered milk duds for the first time, had my whole life ahead of me, and I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> uh. mm -mm -mm. It's quite a nice painting, just one big thing, rather than doing a batch of things. Kind of into it. Dave Gresham says, erect with muscles, powerfully stiff. Behave, Dave. Uh, milk duds, for those those asking, are like little, little balls of like caramel, like quite chewy. Uh, it's covered in chocolate. It's quite nice. Like, I don't really have a sweet tooth, or at least anymore, so I don't like seek them out or anything, but they're nice. They taste good. Ray PW says so poppets. Uh oh poppets. Uh yeah, poppet adjacent, yeah. Yeah. The nice which says I can't stop eating giant monster munch. I'm like I'm fully prepared for you to tell me I'm I'm like wrong and and like that I should be ashamed of myself, but like, I love monster munch. Do not get me wrong, I absolutely adore it, but Giant Monster Munch just hasn't, they, they didn't do anything for me. Because, like, they're not so giant as to be like, whoa, haha, <laughs> wow. Um, but they're just big enough to be inconvenient to eat. Like, I think, I guess, I think my point is that I think normal Monster Munch are, like, bang on the right size. Not the the little, t sort of smaller ones you get in mini pack bags. I swear they're smaller. But, like, normal normal size Monster Munch, I think that's 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 a great sized mouthful. Um, what I have been enjoying of the giant variety is giant, giant Watsits because those, it turns out like, Watsits have always been delicious but like I've always been underwhelmed with the crunch Giant Watsits, absolutely incredible Ah, the nice switch says I don't know, the giants are the perfect size to eat them finger by finger or claw by claw if you will now that I haven't tried because I'm just a like ah, in and crunch it thing I'll, you know what? I'll give them a go and I'll let you know. Dave Gresham says, I want a pack that just contains one face size Monster Munch, like a big pretzel. <laughs> oh, Monster Munch is so good. I've discussed this before on this channel uh, in conversation with uh, in conversation with Joe Scrabbles as if it was a fucking event at BAFTA. But um, I fully, fully acknowledge that um, pickled onion Monster Munch are the best flavour, but roast beef are my actual favourites. There you go. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. All right, everyone. It's time. I'm even getting the box up on the desk today. It's time for an episode of Non-Binary Person Looks Through a Box of Paints. Looking for one paint in particular. Because I haven't found... Oh, I found it first time. That's really annoying. I'd been looking for this paint for ages the other day, and I couldn't find it, so I was like, well, this is going to be a challenge. No, it's just there. All right. Okay, that's a thing, isn't it? Oh, i tell you what I could do. Ah, hang on. That's more interesting. No, I haven't found what I'm looking for. This is going back in the box. Not today, Space Wolves Grey. Today, 
on non-binary person looks for uh, a paint, we're looking for technical contrast medium, we're looking for apothecary white, and we're looking for one more thing, which I think might be contrast skeleton horde. I'm going to do a bit of mixing. Um, I'm going to follow in the footsteps of Mark Kerwan. Our gentle already knows where this is going. Uh, by asking Nun Source. I'm not making Nun Source, but I'm going to make a twist on Nun Source. Gonna make, like, uh, Dave Gresham says this segment name needs work. How dare you, Dave! Um, I'm gonna make a sort of, uh, make a sort of mammoth, yeah, mammoth sauce. Mammoth sauce. Shows the Great and Powerful says, why not get a spice rack for your paints? Because I don't like, I've had, I've had racks before for my paints, and I don't like them. Just don't like them. Ah, Jack Wood is in chat and says, is it time for Nun Sauce? It's none of, it's like a, it's like a Nun Sauce, but it's not Nun Sauce. Um, I don't know, I, I just tried to call it Mammoth Sauce, but... Rob J suggests lo Loxodon Jew? Mmm. Okay. Ray PW says, none sauce, left beef. <laughs> Dick Scatberg asks if Wobbletron finally bit the dust. No, but Wobbletron is being temperamental enough that today I can't be bothered. Just can't be asked. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. What I am going to do is raise this ever so slightly so that on the, the little cam, it's not quite so in covering my face. Dave Gresham says, Heston Blumenthal's Mammoth Sauce. Mmm. You've heard of triple cooked chips. Now here's, we're going to eat a mammoth. Hermit Prime says, what would mammoth even taste like? Uh, I don't know. Presumably quite good. Because, like, I know that humans did hunt them a fair bit. But I think that was also because they were like kind of a complete package, right? They were, you know, it was hide, useful tusk, like ivory, which would be used for um, shelters, um, meat. Haywire says, I imagine, I imagine it would taste like elephant. The nice witch says, I just, I wish Heston Blumenthal would grow up and just let food be food. <laughs> What's... Oh, I was about to say, well, what do you mean by that? And then I remembered he, he made a pub out of food once, didn't he? That was annoying. Yep, yeah, there we go. The nice says, remember when he was like, oh, it's a pub, but also a pie. Yeah, that was annoying. Yeah, fair fucks. Fair fucks, yeah. Okay, and then we're going to try Contrast Skeleton Horde. No idea if this will work, but we're going to try it. Skeleton Horde is kind of this sort of sepia almost colour. Um, Charles the Great and Powerful says, what? A full scale pub out of food? You better believe it. It was a pub, but it was a pie. It was, yeah, I watched that show and it's quite annoying. Okay. Oh God, this looks weird. Okay, I'm not sure this is going to be like a famous replacement for Nun Sauce, if I'm perfectly honest, but we're going to try it. Put a bit of water in there as well. Here we go. Here we go. Nun Sauce, that's really fucking thin and bad. You just added water to it and it's bad. We're going to put this on here anyway. But, safe to say, Nun the the non source there we go non source is uh is not is not going to threaten the original anytime soon it's hardly taking the world by storm this is cack it's rubbish so it is but we're going to stick with it because I've got an idea this makes me sound like I'm just in the final few seconds of the Italian job that's a fucking current reference, isn't it? Blisteringly recent. He made meat fruit once too, says Emma Benton. 
I agree with the nice switch. Stop it, Heston Blumenthal. Just let food be food. Grow up, mate. Stop playing with your food. <laughs> Stop making structure like entire buildings out of your food. Thank you for tri triple cooking my chips. But that's enough now. Uh, it's not. It's not a very good sauce, and I haven't made enough of it. So, so far, non-sauce. Absolute failure. But I've done enough of it now that I need to keep going. Oh well. Okay, some features from the pub. Brought to you by the Nice Witch. Edible snooker tables with pickled egg balls. I remember that. Beer with a scampy fries flavoured head. Fruit machines that pay snacks and beer mats made from whiskey jelly. None of that is fun or cromulent. Like, nah. Dave Gresham says, Johnny is hoping their daring combination of mammoth and sauce will impress the judges. But will their daring mix of flavours lead to their downfall? Oh, I suspect so, Dave. Yeah, the pie pub was annoying. And at the end he was like, tear into the wall! It's all food! I'm Willy Wonka! Blah, 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 blah. Rubbish. Crap and rubbish. Jamie McNally says, I love the AOS Asoyaf minis. They are very good. Um, I actually bought this because my partner, who is like genuinely a, just like a fucking great artist, um, was like, I've never painted a miniature before, let's give it a go. And I was like, sure. And I was like, what sort of things do you want to paint? They were like, I don't really mind faction wise or, you know, what, you know, what sort of thing it is, but I don't want to paint loads of just like metal and or cloth. I want to paint something with like, Fair. And I was like, okay, so I picked up a couple of war mammoths and I also picked up a mind stealer sphinx for Warcry, and that's what they ended up choosing. Uh, and I was like, great, I will find a I will find a use for these mammoths. I was already thinking about the, the Norse team bus, to be perfectly honest with you. Um so that's that's why I ended up with this in my Poseshwan. Uh so far, this this is Yeah, non-source is not the one, but we're doing it now. I think I'm just going to bung some Targor Rage Shade over this. Shout out to, I, I can't remember the username, but whoever it was earlier that said, who names these paints? Uh, professional fucking nerds. <laughs> and I love them for it. I'm going to put some Rage Shade on this, because I kind of do want it to be a bit more red and that. But also, like I've never used the Rage Shade before. I bought some and I haven't used it yet, so... Just curious. Monster Noodle says, I do not currently have birthday cake and now I'm kind of sad. I'm sorry, Monster Noodle. At least you have the promise of future birthday cake though, right? Because like sometimes it's nice to want something. I know that sounds weird, but like sometimes it's just nice to sit there with a sense of anticipation for a bit and be like, yeah, that's going to be great when it happens. So you may not you may not have cake yet, but cake is cake is in the wind. Today is the day where statistically most likely you're, you're statistically most likely to get cake. So just you know have faith. Ray PW says, "Okay, I found the pie pub on YouTube, and that is not as impressive as I was expecting." Right? Yeah. Dan Keller says, I think the nun sauce looks okay, just a bit blonde. It's just giving fuck all real coverage, isn't it? Jack Wood says, Targor angry, very good. Right, we'll slap that on and see what we get. And then I think I'll dry brush some stuff on it. So that'll be fun. I'll dry brush some stuff on it. Fantastic, Johnny, well done. Um, what I will do in the meantime while that dries is let's go back to the leather and start layering it up. Uh, with a brush, actually. We'll use a brush today. Treat you all. I'm going to use this brush. Um, oh. That's not the right thing. Ooh, that could be fun, though. Interesting. I'm going to keep that out. Uh, where's the brown? Brown, brown, brown. There it is. Ta-da. 
<sighs> Rob Lambert says, I'm not very knowledgeable in painting miniatures. Will the paint change after it dry it's dried like colour or be less transparent? Uh, this won't, no. This is kind of like a purposefully a paint that's meant to just sort of sit in the in the recesses. And it's, it's quite a thin layer, so no, it won't really, as it dries. Um, a lot of the time, paints will dry a bit darker than they go on. The nice which says, so happy everyone hates the pie. The pie was shit! Happy Bob says, I think I'm off to sleep. You fine folk are great. Happy birthday, Bob. I hope you have a lovely day and a lovely sleep. Wake up well rested and ready to go. <sighs> All right. I'm just going to come in with some lighter brown. And I'm going to start sort of weathering the edges. That's, there we go. That's what we're doing today. We're weathering to give a look of worn leather. Ryan Mullard has done a super chat saying, thanks Johnny and Skellies for the chill vibe. It is only the early hours of Wednesday, brackets Australia, and it has already been a week. I'm um, sorry to hear that. Um, it seems quite common at the minute for everyone to be having quite a week, quite early on in the week. That was certainly me last week. I'm just about hanging on to this week so far, but it is only Tuesday, so there's plenty of time for it to go disastrously wrong. Um, but yeah, I, I hear you, Brian, and I'm grateful for the super chat, and I hope your week starts to turn itself round very soon. And if it doesn't, I hope it ends swiftly, and that you have a great weekend in the weekend coming. Ah, life in 2022. It's just, it's just a series of people going fucking hell all the time, which I can live with. I can get down with it, you know, but everyone does seem to be having quite a time at the minute. Anonymous says, the only time novelty stuff involving pie is appropriate is March 14th. Why, Anonymous? Is there some sort of pie thing that I don't know of? I need to zoom this camera out, don't I, a bit. Sounds like this mammoth is absolutely vast. <laughs> Beer Burrito says, I would like to live in precedented times, thank you. Oh, pie day. Right, 3.14, sorry. It, but uh, just, I mean, you know, we do dates the other way around here. March 14th here is 14-3. And there, there isn't a 14th month. So wait, no, wait, 14. So, you know, yeah, we did. Yeah, there isn't a 14th month, so we can't do the third day of the 14th month. But I'm delighted for you all. I hope you all have a lovely pie on that day. PS month first is a shit system. Suck it up. <laughs> uh, there I said it. How do you like me now? Yeah, that... That non-source just did absolutely nothing, didn't it? Emma Benton says, fight me, it makes more sense. No, I won't, and no, it doesn't. So there we go. EA122 says, Star Wars Day would never work in a day-month-year format. No, it doesn't. All that. Hmm, yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't. There you go. All right, here we go. Targor Rage Shade. Oh, I have used it, apparently. Or at least I've opened it. So that's fun. Let's just smash a bit on top of this little guy's head and just see what we get. 
Oh god, it's- Oh god, I'm giving him frosted fucking tips. The mammoth's got frosted tips! Oh, this will not stand. Oh, I hate it. I'm gonna have to dry brush- I'm gonna have to dry brush so much grey onto this thing. Cheerful Spiders on a super chat saying, July 22nd is acceptable for pie festivities as well. 22 divided by 7 equals pie. Oh, there you go. Division-based holidays. Who knew? They're the new hot thing. Oh, God. <laughs> Jack Wood says, Guy Fieri mammoth steaks. It does look, yeah, it's made Guy Fieri into a mammoth. Well, okay, that's a thing. I can make this work. Painting with shades is fun. Yeah, I'll do a grey dry brush on that and I think it'll look alright actually. I'm gonna so I'm gonna shade the mammoth and then I'm gonna start in on the metals and the bone to sort of fill it out a bit more, fill the model out some. Lemon1087 10, 10, offers Guy Fieri. That's a lot. Seo Tog is in chat. Says, just finished the hob streams. Enjoyable and spooky. Anywho, anywho, happy Tuesday, folks. Hello. Thank you for watching those. Weren't they spooky? Thank you for saying they're also enjoyable. That's nice. Yeah, Hobbs Barrow stayed with me for quite a long time, really. I found myself thinking about it a lot. Oh, sorry, I realised you can't listen. You can't hear the music I'm listening to. <laughs> so that was just me making a fucking random noise. Great. Really firing on all cylinders today. That's tremendous. Um, I'm listening to some lo-fi beats in my ears because I'm in one of those moods when nothing I normally listen to is satisfying, but I need some noise, but I also just need something calming. You know what? This is actually coming out better than I thought it was going to with the shade on top of the crap contrast. So that's nice. Frosted Tips Mammoth, you're okay, actually. Like I say, before I do anything more to this fur, I'll uh, I'll base paint the rest of the stuff. So like the shield, the horn here, this metal trim, um, obviously the tusks, and then we'll sort of make a decision from there. Yeah, there we go. Dave Gresham says this war mammoth is much more manageable than the old Fold Forge World one, which was not only expensive but was absolutely humongous. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, I'm painting this up as a basically as a joke, as a as a fun bit. So, yeah, I wouldn't drop loads of money on it. And it's yeah, it's not that big. You get two in the box. Sun of Ice and Fire does seem like one of the more affordable mini games out there in terms of not absolutely gouging you for something. So there we go, that's that bit done. Quite like it, actually. What's up, you woolly motherfucker? You look all right to me. Let's get some uh, let's get some metals down on you, eh? Oh, the nice switch says biggest dog I've ever seen. Uh, let's see, metals, metals, metals. I want a dark metal. We could go for tinny tin, you know, because it's got a fun name. We do some tinny tin, that kind of works, doesn't it? Let's do tinny tin. Neck of the Kitty says, Hey, Johnny and Skellies, how's all today? Doing all right, thank you. Pfft, repercussion says, Wooly Wonka. 
Daniel Trigg says, I just got the Song of Ice and Fire starter set for Baratheons and sweet Christmas those boys like their stack motifs. Don't they, though? That's the thing. I don't know what house I'd pick if I were to play in that. Or, you know, what house I'd pick in general. I mean, Game of Thrones tanked so hard at the end that uh, it doesn't feel relevant anymore that people are like, what house would you be? But I always had a hard time choosing. I feel like I kind of... I quite, I to be honest with you, I quite liked Robert Baratheon. I thought he was good fun. Just sort of being there being like, I'm miserable. Bring me more wine. Um, but none of the houses come off as really likeable because obviously Joffrey's a Baratheon, technically, and all that kind of stuff. Um, Weekend Minis is on Super Chat saying, Morning, Johnny. My kid's Halloween playlist has a song called Skeleton Inside by the Aquabats. Existential crisis in a bottle. Just try not to think about it. Try not to think about the skeleton that lives inside of you. And could any day wake up? <laughs> Jackwood says, all in caps, Start the joust before I piss myself. I think I'd probably go Baratheons, because they're just kind of like, they're a bunch of rowdies, aren't they? I mean, one of them is like a really weird, pious dude. Um, but like, Robert Baratheon, just a, just a rowdy, you know? It's just... There for a good time and for a drunk time. Whereas all, all the others <coughs> take themselves so seriously. Rob Lambert says, but the boar, Johnny. Is there a house with a boar sigil, though? Because like, obviously a boar is, would be my sigil, but... Maybe I'd just be a, a, a lesser house, vaguely aligned with somebody, not sticking my neck out too far. Ibrahim 506 says, yeah, Game of Thrones tanked and I'm not hearing good things about House of the Dragon. I've Oh, the boar killed Robert Baratheon. Of course it did. Thank you, Sam Street. Um, whoops. Oh, okay. Well, mm, there my loyalties are divided. Uh, is Johnny... Confessing to regicide. No. I did not kill Robert Baratheon. Um, uh, what was I going to say? I've heard, I have heard good things about House of the Dragon, to be honest. Um, like M. Benton uh, says, everyone who I know who's watching House of the Dragon is having a great time, lol. Uh, I'm the same way. Everyone I know who's watching it is really, really having fun. Really enjoying themselves. So, don't know who to who to trust now. The old tinny tin. That's going to need some a different metal on top of that as well, because otherwise it's all going to be too homogenous. I'm going to brush silver onto that quite heavily, and I think it's going to look nice. Um. What a fun, what a series of fun discoveries we're making with colours today, hey? What a time to be alive. This bodes well for later if we get to those bases, if we get this mammoth done swiftly enough, because uh, I don't quite know what way to approach doing them. So, Jan Pales says, hello all. Hello, Jan. I hope you're well. Lisa Hunt says, free folk because spear wives. Yeah, in fairness, the free folk are pretty cool, aren't they? They're pretty straightforward, like, fuck off. <laughs> we want to be left alone. What's your deal, then? Our deal's fuck off. Why is that? Because we want to be left alone. Oh, okay, then. All right. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Simple. Oh, mammoth, mammoth. Mammoth, 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 Floyd, Hassle, Bank. Don't know where that came from, but okay. Emma Benton says, Is it too soon to talk about the season finale of House of the Dragon? Yes, it is, Emma. Almost certainly too early to be talking about that. Sorry. 
There will definitely be people in chat who haven't finished or even started. I mean, as for me, I've literally only just started the second season of The Mandalorian, so you can see how current I am with programmes. Oops, damn it. What is wrong with my framing today, apart from it being bad? Pretty little queen bee says, gotta go home now, I will come back later, see you all. Take care, safe journey. Okay. Tinny tin was a choice for this. I think it'll come good, but it's gonna come good when we put a different metal color on there. So will that really be tinny tin coming good? I mean, I quite like it actually. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. I'm put some tinny tin on here as well. Fuck it. Let's go for it with the tusks. Oh. History of Character says, Johnny, was that your neck that just popped? Are you okay? That was my shoulder. Um, but my neck is giving me a bit of trouble at the minute. I just got a new pillow, so hopefully that's going to sort things out. But um, yeah, my neck's been annoying me for quite some time now. Um, but hey ho. No, that was my shoulder. I, I carry a lot of tension in my shoulder when I'm tense, which is um, all the time. Uh, and in my sleep, I managed to aggravate like a years old shoulder injury on my other shoulder. So I've, all in all, I feel like I'm falling apart at the minute. It's great. Thank you for asking. Oops. Right, I'm going to get the rim on this shield painted and I'll do the other one. And then we're going in with some honest to goodness color because I need to get the team colors of this uh, of my Norse team onto this somehow. So I'm gonna put it on the shield. So hopefully you can see there are like individual planks. So I'm gonna alternate between red and blue. Make them nice team appropriate shields. <laughs> the nice which says my neck, my back, my mammoth and my neck. Brackets, play knack. Look, I, I put it on there. People can vote for it if they really want to. If they want to use their one vote to vote for knack, they may. But yes, uh, patrons are currently voting uh, on the game we're going to be playing in the next season of Press Any Chiarini. Uh Spoilers, it looks like it's going to be a Plague Tale Innocence, which I was not expecting, but would be happy to play. So there we go. Nothing quite like Plague and Deadly Rats to make for a cheerful Let's Play series. I promise to be respectful at all times. Dave Gresham says, what's the name of your Norse team? I'm currently thinking the Wodan Street Berserkers. Um, just because Wodan is um, the, uh, it's the old English uh, word for Odin. And that seems like fun. Haywire says, is Innocence the first or the second one? It's the first one. Right, there we go, right, there's there's a mammoth. Oh, I'm pleased with how this is coming out, that's nice. Welcome back to Non-Binary Person, Tri never mind, I found it. Haywire says, no, but I haven't played the first one. I haven't played the first one, so it seems weird to jump in with the second one. I'm going to be missing a lot of stuff. Also, I need to pop some Rage Shade into a bit. Claire Bear says, will this get Nutella on it? Nope, it's getting the same basing treatment my Norse team got, which is uh, base is painted sort of in a blue icy scheme, and then it gets a frost effect over the top. Colin Lasser says, I'm going to go try. Back later, everyone. Wish me luck and no line. Good luck, Colin. Emma says, yeah, you'll have no idea what's happening if you don't play Innocence. Right, there you go. So it'll be a Plague Tale Innocence. Eric Simpson says, have you played PT? 
you're in for a good if somewhat upsetting time. I have played PT. If you go on to youtube.com forward slash Eurogamer and search PT late to the party, you'll find me playing it with Ian Higton by my side. I really liked it. Um, I do technically have a PS4 uh, with PT installed on it, but it is currently in the possession of someone to whom I'm no longer talking, so that might be gone to the wind, to be perfectly honest with you. But uh, hey ho, so it goes. Emma says, then you can play Requiem and be even more upset. I'm so stressed out. Emma, you always recommend games in the loveliest terms. You can play this game and have a horrific time. Anthony and Loz have done a super chat saying, Hi Johnny, watching this about an hour behind. Hope this doesn't turn into a mammoth painting job. Here's something for Watson's Food Fund. Hope you're all well. Thank you very much, Anthony and Loz. Um, that's very kind. I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm doing all right, thanks. I am... Um, yeah. I've, uh, I've been sort of taking little steps over the last couple of days to try and manage my anxiety a bit more proactively. And so far, it's almost sort of working. So that's good. So there we are. There we go. So we've done red stripes, and then we'll do red stripes again. So we'll need to do a red stripe in this sort of corner piece, and then we'll fill in the other stripes with blue. Because the berserkers are red and blue, and sort of a verdigris colour in their kit. I'll go get them during the break, as they're in the living room at the minute. Eberol506 says, uh, speaking of pets, are the kittens still around? Yes, they are. They are adorable. The kittens, uh, we've got them until uh, the middle of November. Uh, they need just a few more weeks with their mum, and well, more t to be honest with their litter mates. Because at the minute, they're either asleep or they're bombing around after one another and fighting. And they're learning all about bite inhibition. So, like, before, like, did you know when kittens are born, they can't retract their claws? Their claws are always out. They have to learn how to do it. But now they've not only learned to do it, but they're learning when to bring them out and when not. So before, they'd jump on you and be like, Nah! And they're still doing that a little bit. But also, if you, like, play with them, nowadays they, they'll bat at you, but they won't have their claws out. And that's something they just learn from playing with their litter mates, and it's really important, because if a cat doesn't learn that, obviously it doesn't know not to do it. And it will do it. So, yeah, it's been, um, it's, it's fun. It's nice. Welcome back to Non-Binary Person Looks for a Paint in a box of paints. Today we're trying to find, I think, probably Cantor Blue. Uh, there it is. Short episode. To the point. Bang. Cheerful Spider says, kitten claws are the sharpest thing in the universe. They really are. And they really like trying to climb trouser legs. I've been dissuading them, but then the other day, uh, Billie Eilish tried to climb my trouser leg, but I wasn't wearing trousers. Um, it just hurt. <laughs> History of the Character says, I would argue puppy teeth. Puppy teeth are no joke, actually, as well. They are serious. When Watson was teething, it was just, oof. Yeah, we've got some Cantor blue in the mix. Dave Gresham says, Shit, these segment titles do not get better. Can we workshop this? I'll have you know that non-binary person looks for a paint in their box of paints is a is a long running and, and deeply treasured format on this channel. I don't think it needs renaming. I think it's perfect, just the way it is. Oh, and look how the underpainting's coming through on that blue. How some of the blue is lighter than some of the other blue. Wow. Hermit Prime says, it's a staple of the brand. Haywire says, it goes the message across, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> less, less key. 
Shows the Great and Powerful says, I would just be happy if the segments were longer. Well, sometimes paints are elusive and sometimes paints, you just find them, you know? The problem is I start looking and then if I'm having trouble, then I start the episodes because I can't, you know, which is, you know, maybe me being overly cautious. Ooh, ooh. Mm, little finger started grumbling then. Right. So there we go, there's the colour in the shields. Now let's start basing all of the tusk stuff. Ivory, I suppose you'd call it. And for that, we need our good friend, pop 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 Vale Sand. History of the character says, look, I'm just impressed you can keep track of what colours you have. I just have a basic beginner army paint set, and I can't remember what, I've, what all I've got in there. I think it's just because I paint so often. Although I was looking through earlier, and I was like, I have that shade? Like, when did I get... There was one I saw earlier that I can't even remember what it is now. And I saw it and I was like, seriously, when did I buy that paint? Right. Let's get some pale sand on the go, shall we? Pale sand, and you know you are pale sand. Gonna need two coats of that. I should be studying, says gotta go to class now, see you on VOD. Good luck, I should be studying. Hope the midterm goes great. And I hope you line up a treat for yourself afterwards, even if it's just returning to this stream. And if indeed you have done that and you're back, hi, welcome back. I hope it went great. I hope the future's nice. Uh, yeah, that's about, that's about it. Hello to everyone on VOD Squad. <sighs> this is nice. It's nice hanging out with you all. Thanks for being here. Feeling quite calm today, which is nice. It's not something I feel often. Just man bun says, I should be studying too. Got an HSC exam in two days. Okay, how do you want to play this, Just Man Bun? Do you want me to, like, encourage you to study? Slash sort of yell at you to get out there and hit the books? Or are you just taking a, a little break? Because it's important to take a break. You, you know, your body, your mind does have limits. You can only absorb knowledge, you know, when you're in the right frame. But, uh... Also, sometimes procrastinating is an easy habit to fall into, and uh, it's hard to it's it's hard to enjoy it, but also hard to break out of, which is like the worst of both worlds. Just man bun says it's a pretty long break. Okay, well listen, man bun, I'm not gonna you're your own boss. I'm not gonna tell you to leave this stream, not least because you know. That's kind of not what you're meant to do when you're streaming. You're meant to be like, oh my God, stick around. But listen, 
I'm not doing anything of earth-shattering importance today on this stream, am I? So, look, if you want to stick around and recharge your batteries, good for you. But also, you want to go do a little bit of studying, might be good for you. It's up to you, buddy. There's no judgment from me either way. So when I said, might be good for you, I was like, oh God, I sound like every educator I ever ran into. Well, not every single one. Lots of them were nice. It's kind of mean to make this mammoth carry like another mammoth tusk around. Or I wonder if, is it like a spare tire? Is that what it's meant to be? Dunno. Just man bun says, make no mistake, I will stay on the stream while studying. But 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 best of both worlds. Me 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 me. Come on then, let's paint this spare tusk. If your other tusk gets a flat, we'll swap them over. Pop you up on bricks. Oh, this is coming along really nicely, actually. I'm very pleased with the, very pleased after all, with how that fur is is uh, is looking. It needs a little bit more. At the minute, it's still just quite desaturated, but I also like it, so I don't want to go too, too wild. I do want to shade these tusks as well, so that they look a bit sort of darker toward the root here. Ah. Dan Keller says, I see that Johnny is no longer just threatening to kick people in the shins if they don't do a thing they should be doing. I'm feeling chill today. I don't feel like threatening people with a kick in the shins, you know? Dave Gresham says, Kids, friendo, skellies. I must take the dog for a stroll. She's giving me the big evils and has slumped sadly onto the floor as if I've told the worst possible news. The outside beckons. You go walk that dog. Hope you have a lovely time, Dave. Thanks for stopping by. Um, but yeah, I mean, if anyone wants me to, to threaten to kick them in the shins over something they should be doing later... Maybe I'll work up to it, but right now I'm just feeling like pretty relaxed. I've got some friends playing some board games this evening. Said I might stop in, but to be honest, I might just stay home and do some writing. You know, just little chill, little chill project time. Cheerful Spider's done a super chat saying, out of curiosity, when do you use the belly of the brush versus the tip? Belly of the brush is for flat surfaces, so like here, there's nothing wrong with just going like bleh, bleh, bleh. Or if there's like a hard edge, like you see the hard edge here, doing that, oh, yeah, fuck it, I'll show you. Doing that is a very easy way to pick out that line. The tip of the brush is more for accessing tricky areas, like see how I've got like a little corridor here that I need to get down. There we go, there's that. Um, so kind of like that. Sorry, I was just checking on the pig. Uh, so that's when I use the belly versus the, the tip. I'll be honest with you, I probably use the belly more than I ought to. Um, 
Sometimes my painting is quite slapdash, or if we want to be kind about it, we call it painterly. Um, so I wouldn't say that I am a guideline for excellent technique, really. I try to be neat. Sometimes I'm not, and I just live with it rather than fixing it. That was a little sleep worth, did you hear that? Sounds like a laser gun. My partner's found some porcini mushrooms in the woods. Yes, please. Ray PW says, what is pig doing? Having a dream. Having a little bark in her sleep. Wings of Eternia has done a super chat saying greetings from VOD Squad, we who live in the past, the present and the future. Quick drive by donation for the Kiadini cat and pig home. Stay awesome, Johnny and fellow skellies. Thank you, Wings of Eternia. Thank you for the drive by uh, super chat. That's very kind. Um, and yeah, I hope, I hope you are very well. Hello, VOD Squad. You are all lovely. Take that. There's a lot more bone on this thing than I thought. So I do the little bone tiara, headdress, head armor. It's quite watered down that paint, isn't it? There we go, that's a bit better. <sighs> Chaos says, how are Speedy and the kittens doing? All right, thanks. Uh, although Speedy tells them off a lot these days. I think she's sort of starting to, well, I mean, she is weaning them. They're already eating solid food, but she's also still feeding them, but this morning she was just grumpy. Like if they got near her, she'd be like, Wah! and would sort of chase them off. Um, the kittens are just like chaos personified. And Speedy's done a great job with them. But also I think her patience is wearing a little bit thin. But that's fine. Like, you know, she is going to kind of withdraw from them a little bit as they get closer to sort of being separated out. Because, you know, they would eventually wander off on their own terms and just go live their lives. So, but we've got them for another two, three weeks. Maybe three weeks. A bit longer. A bit longer. So, yeah, it's good fun. Um, let's see. So I need to do the, the leather there. And here, and here, and there's some chain to block in, and some like ropes. We'll do these spears. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's looking all right. I need to pick a slightly oh, excuse me different leather color. And what I might do is dig out the old terracotta. That's copper. Hello. Welcome to another edition of Non-Binary Person Looks Through a Box of Paints in order to find a paint. Today we're looking for terracotta. Is that it? It's not. That's vermilion. That's not it either. It might be in the main box, you know. Hmm, there's my squig orange. I was wondering where that was. Uh, yeah, I think it's in the big box. Wow. What a fascinating episode this is turning out to be. A startling discovery, friends. It isn't where I thought it was going to be. It's not in the big box. This is most troubling. We've had a paint go AWOL. It's a rogue paint. I don't know where it is. So I can't use it. 
That's odd. Is it here? Yes, it's here. There we go. <laughs> Daniel Triggs says, paint location confirmed, everyone stand down. Yeah, chill out everyone. Nice which says that was a bloody roller coaster, Johnny. I was I was concerned just the same as you. Well that'll be a nice paint to put on. Yeah, we'll do that. Do, do, do. I'm actually even gonna put in some some brown in there. Yeah, there we go. That's the colour I'm after. Great. Sort of a tanned leather almost. Paint's not going on brilliantly. This is a too thin coats candidate, if ever I've seen one. Aiden folks, is, <laughs> so I'm a super sticker of uh, a cat that looks frankly quite alarming. I basically now just imagine it as that cat from uh, the excavation of Hobbs Barrow, which is not a comforting thought. But what, in fairness though, the breed of that cat, right? It's like it was like a lovely sort of blue. Smoky blue cat. That's a lovely, lovely breed to have just as a stray that you're not meant to feed in the pub, you know? But then that's the village of Bewley for you, isn't it? All sorts going on there. Aiden Folk says, oh, I'd forgotten that cat. It's all right, Aiden. It can't hurt us. I don't think. Yeah, it's a nice mix. Nice mix of brands. Offsets the other one quite nicely. That definitely needs a second coat, but we'll get there. The nice switch says, look, sometimes cats are just weird. I would, I would actually say most of the time cats are just weird. They're absolutely bizarre, they are. It's just nice to take some time out to paint a mammoth every now and then, I'm finding. Just having a nice time. This needs so little, but it does need something, and I'm not entirely... It's a dry brush, but I'm not entirely sure what colour to do. Never think about it. Um... Also, oh, we've got some got some work to do here, haven't we? We sort of need a. Let's let's see, let's see. Ah. Chaos says, I think my favourite thing about cats is the archaeological evidence that we didn't domesticate them. They kind of just decided they wanted to be looked after, and humans would be doing it. Huh? There you go. Who knew? Chaos did. And archaeologists, it turns out. That's that's wild. Okay, what colour do we want this to be under here? I might just shade it, see what we come up with. Yeah, I just haven't put any raid shade on it, have I? Marissa J says, hello all, I'm here for calming down after Ox playing Devour. Welcome aboard, there's plenty of calming to be done. Um, what we're doing, <laughs> Ray PW says we're the only species that could use the tin opener. Very good. Uh, we're painting this mammoth. Uh, it's from the A Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. But I'm going to use it, surprise, surprise, uh, for Blood Bowl. Um, because I'm using a Norse team and uh, they need a bus. So this is the bus that takes them to and from the games. 
I'm thinking about getting a cart to put on the back that I can actually put the team on. I think it'd be quite fun. Right, so now we're going to switch to a smaller brush. Because we've got some smaller details to block in. Thunder Cookie says, is this for the team that has the beer hogs? You know it, yeah. Haywire says, are you going to give it a Mumuk style howder? Can't be bothered to make a howder. I did think about it. I, for some reason, I just think it pulling a wagon is funnier. We'll see. I don't want to make anything too big because the car park I made for my dwarf team has just sat on my desk ever since. And it's annoying. It takes up a lot, a lot of space. Um, I might actually take the ship off it and just decommission the actual car park bit. Um, it was fun to make, but also quite annoying. So, <gasps> Marissa J says, so opposite to calming down, Johnny, did you see that Ravenous Devils has an endless mode that has a wanted meter and taxes? You can choose not to kill people and just serve veggies. That's more like it, isn't it? That was one thing that was really missing, was the fear of getting caught at any point in Ravenous Devils. That sounds great. Will I, I don't know if I'll go back to it to stream. I feel like we, we had a lot of cutting up for people and hearing, what are you going to be, a meatball? So I might, I might not, but that's exciting. That's something that game needed. So that's cool. Thank you for letting me know, Marissa. That is very good. You know what, I might change my mind, but for now, we'll, um, we'll stay cool about it. I've never stayed cool in my life. Um, right. Metal bits that I haven't painted. Metal bits that I haven't painted here. Sneaky little bit in there that's hiding. Oh, I missed a bit of tinny tin there. James Evans says, great job on the, on the Trunky Boy. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Um, I'm having fun with it. And then after this, uh, assuming there's time, we're going to get started on some moon bases. Uh, which currently look like this. Uh, I forget the name of the account, but I saw it on Instagram and I was like, yep, yeah, that looks like fun. So, okay. Ah, we need a light brown to do the ropes with. Hmm, Zandri dust. Have you just dried out? Oh no, you haven't. I've previously rescued you in Paint Hospital, haven't I? That's fine. Xandri dust. Ooh, this might be the colour to dry brush on, you know. It's a nice sort of sandy colour. Might end up doing that. I don't know. Just paint this quite gently. Frosted Tips Mammoth. All the rage. <laughs> the Nice Rich says, Ravenous Devils gave us Brick Wall Mister and I could not be more grateful. That's true. That was a gift. That was a real gift. Oh, my Brick Wall Mister. Whoops. God bless you, brick wall, mister. There we go, there's that. Um, got to do the wood on the old spear handles. I diluted that paint too much. 
Ewan Monaghan, um, sorry, Ewan Monaghan says, what are the moon bases from? They are, I made them out of um, modelling putty of some unfortunately named brown stuff. Uh, but they are for 40k for the Leagues of Votan, the sort of eggy dwarves I've been painting for a while. Faisal says, Johnny, do you have any plans for Halloween yet? Not yet. Um, I always leave it very late. Uh, two of my friends who had an excellent party last year have been sort of making vague rumblings about having a party again this year. But um, I don't really know. So, no, is the, uh, in short, no idea what I'm doing yet, but that's fine. Chaos says my bases look like tiny, unappealing, unappealing crumpets. They do a bit. It's hard to show up, sort of, like, I've done extra little pock marks on them. Um, hopefully they're going to look sufficiently like the surface of a planet. Um, once I'm done with them, we shall see. That's been dilated too much as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. JP Farrenden says, just joined. What a shaggy-haired creature. Also, nice mammoth. Very good, JP. Hello. Mr. Tom for the Wind says, whoops, in no way did I fall asleep about an hour ago. Welcome to the Skelly Pal Nap Club, Mr. Tom. Here for a nice sleep, just not the big one. Mr. Tom says, in my defense, I'm full of cold and it's not good for my sleep schedule. Entirely, ow, fair. Entirely fair. Oh, no. No, Storm Vermin Fair, come on, I need you. You're going to have to go to paint hospital. Damn it. Gonna need to shade this bit. It looks a bit flat currently, but some shade will bring out some of the, the detail. These are really nicely sculpted, these models, I have to say. I don't think I can be bothered to do like all the rank and file troops necessary to play this game, but taking on a big piece has just been quite a treat, really. Right. Let that dry for a sec. And then we'll shade it. I want to do a bit more work on the old um, leather bits. That's too much, so I'll borrow a bit of that. Take it back a notch. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, here we go. So there we go, like I was talking about earlier, this is when you use sort of the belly of the brush to kind of just pick out sharp edges like that. I don't want to go mad with this. I don't want to go mad with the beer. <laughs> it's nice to have a nice log. Keep coming back to it, all right? Um, not going mad with this, but I do want to do some weathering on some of the leather here, just to make it look a bit more lived in. Because it's a mammoth. Can't take it off itself, it probably doesn't take this off very often. 
uh, Levi Coffee has done a super chat saying, building my first Space Marines as you go along today. We'll paint them soon. Have to get my daughter to build hers, then prime them first. Thanks for the inspiration. Wonderful as always. Uh, well, like I say, I mean, I've already said it, but welcome welcome to the hobby again, Levi. I'm sure you're going to have a lovely time, and it's great that your daughter's jumped in with you. Um, Marines, they're just, like, good fun. Lots of flat surfaces, quite fun to paint. Uh, okay, great bunch of lads. Mm. Not sure. Thanks as ever to Emma Benton, the fastest mod online, for protecting us from pornographic spam bots. They are not friends. Friends don't turn into automated programs and spam porn at friends. You know? That's not what friends do. And I hope one day those bots will learn. Obviously they won't learn. I hope they don't learn too much. That would sort of be like a terrifying... Um, Terminator sort of situation, Skynet. There we go. That's what I was looking for. But I hope they, I hope they, you know, at least realise that what they're doing, it's not, it's not the way to interact with people. You know. <laughs> Faisal says all in caps, rebuke the sex bots. <laughs> rebuke, rebuke. I think they've been thoroughly rebuked thanks to Emma Benton's skills. So happy days. Here we go. Nice leather bag. It's where it keeps all its peanuts and that. Presumably. I imagine that's what a woolly mammoth likes. Probably, they've probably had loads of peanuts in their time. Iced buns, peanuts. Right, what I want to do is sh shade this bit, shade all the tusks clear up that bald patch there, just next to that tusk. Um, and then I want to go in with a small dry brush, actually, and start dry brushing this tinny tin to try and put more of a silver metal into it. That'll be fun for everybody. And then we shall have a quick break, I think. At the top of the hour, anyway. because that's just what we do. I'll make myself a cup of tea. Okie dokie. Now, need to get the old. Expressive Depressive has done a super chat saying, bestest, bestest, bestest skelly pal. Thanks for the good, good, nice voice. Brain hurty, nap time. Sorry to hear brain hurty. Uh, at least at nap time. Have good nap. Feel refreshed. Thank you for the super chat, expressive depressive. Uh, and I'm glad you think I have a good, good, nice voice because this is my voice. This is just how I sound. Right. What we're gonna do? This is a pretty advanced maneuver, but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna invert the mammoth. Because what I want to do. All I want to do. Is have some fun. Here with a mammoth, painting it just for fun. Oh god, that's quite a lot. That's very much a lot. Oh, I haven't... Oh, it's new shade, that's why. Yeah, this is too much. It's too much, they said, continuing to put it on anyway. Hopefully this will settle okay, because this is a, one of the new formula shades which works on the contrast medium system or whatever they want to call it. 
The reason I inverted the mammoth is I kind of want this shade to run down the tusks and away from the top. How successful it'll be, we'll find out. But that was at least the idea. I can always come back in and dry brush some cream back onto that, but yeah. What a fascinating modern age we live in. Right. Yeah, I'll dry brush some cream back over that. That'll be fine. James Evans says the RSPCA shall be on to you for mammoth bothering by means of insertion. Mammoths are extinct. I can do what I like. James, you knock. <laughs> nice relaxing time. Nice chill vibes. Nice really friendly welcoming vibes. You knock. Sorry, James. Sorry. If I snap to you, it's because I know you're right. But seriously, I will get away with it. This thing's made of plastic. Adam says, WWAS, what would Attenborough say? Probably not much unless I paid him. It's his job, mate. My phone's going off a lot in my pocket. I'm just going to make sure that there isn't some emergency to which I should be tending. No. Okay. Sega Genesis says he'd say dinosaurs. Not the same man, Sega Genesis. I'm sorry. It was David Bellamy. So I'll do the tusks back here, but all in all, we're doing all right. Okie dokie. We'll let that sit on the tusks and then we'll sort of know what to do with it once it's all sort of dried. But like I say, it's time for a small dry brush. Zega says, what? Really? Yeah, really. Dinosaurs was not David Attenborough. It's a completely different man. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see how this goes. I don't care for it. Eh, it's all right. <laughs> really being decisive today, aren't I? Let's do a heavier dry brush. Let's really get and get in there. Yeah, there we go. It doesn't have to be too obvious, but I just want to make sure the light... Oh, it looks a lot better on camera, actually, than it does in, in, in person. Uh, I want to make sure the light sort of catches it a bit, especially on these little bits here, because they don't show up as obviously as metal.
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Raw. Oh, and on the shield. Okay. Peter Michigan says, hello, Johnny and Arspoos. It's been too long since I got to see a live stream live. Good to be here. Hello, hello. Welcome aboard. For the time being, we're painting this mammoth, um, which has actually come on very nicely. I'm quite pleased with it. I've just noticed its eyes are quite big, so I'm wondering if I should actually paint them. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, we're nearly done. I'll um, get some more pale sand into the tusks there. Oh, I needed to, to um, shade that, didn't I? I'll shade this bit. I've missed a bit on a tusk. It's just some general tidying up to do. That's good. James Evans says, googly eyes or riot? I don't think I have googly eyes. Which feels... Um, Feels wrong. It feels like that's sort of the thing I should have. Um, yeah, okay. That's right. There was a bit I'd missed. Do the bit I'd missed. Hugh says, right it is then. Yeah, fair play, Hugh. In fairness, you did tell me the stakes, didn't you? You said googly eyes or we riot. That's what chat demanded. And uh, I didn't deliver. So, all right. Off, off your pup. Go have a little riot. That's a joke. I'm not inciting rioting. Have I been painting with my glasses on this entire time? That's why my eyes feel weird. Um, it's illegal to incite a riot in the UK, so I cannot be clear, clearer. I'm not telling anyone to riot. That was a joke. I have been painting with my glasses on this entire time. Wow! Oh, that explains a lot. Okay. Alex Simkin has done a super chat saying, The mammoth bus is coming and everybody's jumping. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Um, it's good to be reminded of the imminence of the mammoth bus. Here it is. Here is the mammoth bus. There we go. Um... Yeah, I've got to put something in those eyes, I think. Two, I'll do I'll do a dark brown and then I'll um paint sort of like ow. Yeah, I'll put I'll put a little pupil on there on on each of those. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? In the meantime, let's go back to our dry brush. Hello, dry brush. Corvus Albright is on a super chat saying furry ass mammoth haiku for furry ass mammoth haiku time. Big honking bastard, the ultimate little spoon. Give him a cuddle. I did. That's not where I thought that was gonna go. That that haiku, but that was lovely. He is a big bastard, isn't he? Oh, I've just made these chalky now. That doesn't look good. They said, carrying on. That's better. Mm, I still look a bit chalky. I don't. Yeah, I don't love what I've done there. Oh well. It's going to carry on doing it. Ah, no, I like it again. Turns out I like it. Ah, oh, it's such a roller coaster being me. Oh, and you couldn't see any of that. Well done, Johnny. It's giving it sort of a slightly hazy finish, but then you actually do get that on bone, so I don't hate it. Cool. Ah. <sighs> Mm. 
Lucas says, is that a regular sized mammoth pulling a large car, a regular mammoth pulling a regular car, or a big mammoth pulling a small car? No idea. I, uh, in the break, I'll go get the team and we, I can show you the scale. Because what we need to do after the break is paint the base on this little mamma jamma. And then frost it. Um, but before the break, because we do have a little bit of time before we go into the break, I'm going to paint pupils onto these eyes. Oh, I was going to, sh I need to shade that thing. Let's do that now because I keep forgetting. All right, we're going to cool it with the riot jokes now. Thank you all. We had, they had a good run, but we're going to stop them now. There we go, that looks, that's tied it together a bit better with the rest of the model. Um, right, I'm going to paint pupils on there. The nice switch says, is there a mammoth bus stop? Is that a joke I'm not getting? Is that a reference? I'm not sure. Uh, right, need to get black paint. That's not black paint at all. Hello and welcome back to Non-Binary Person. Looked through a box of paints trying to find a paint. That's liquid frost, we'll need that later. Uh, today we're trying to find black, black paint. There it is. We've got it, everybody. The nice one says, I'm just curious with a sad face. Oh, I'm sorry. There can be a mammoth bus stop. We can make a mammoth bus stop. Why not? Robin Tweety says, checking back finally after weeks. Johnny, did you check out Moonbreaker? I haven't watched it yet, but it does sound hilarious. And uh, how did you feel about Hobbs Barrow now you've had, had time to digest it? I think it's great. Bloody love it. Um, I'm waiting for a friend to finish playing it uh, so we can talk about it. And I'm very excited about the prospect. Because, yeah, bloody great game. There you go, there's one pupil. And then... Second pupil. That one's actually a bit small. There we go, look! They've got bloody eyes now. Oh, it's a mammoth bus, so why not a mammoth bus stop, says Lucas. There was a joke I was get I didn't get. Yeah, yeah, it's a bus, so there should be a bus stop. Jesus Christ, Johnny. Yeah, yes, the nice switch. Yeah, I'm gonna make a bus stop for it. Stop for it now. I've forgotten how to speak English properly. Yeah, I'm gonna make it a bus stop. Now that you've said that, what a great idea. God, I'm daft sometimes. I honestly didn't get it. I didn't get it. I forgot that I called this the bus. Wow. Johnny. Nice which says hell yeah. Lovely bus. Paul Hayworth says greetings and salutations. Hello, Paul. Look, a mammoth. It's pretty much painted, but we need to paint the base, which is going to be fun. Because what we're going to do is we're going to paint it really quite quickly in a series of blue colours and then we're going to slap down some liquid frost on it which and then I'll put the mammoth sort of like on my keyboard maybe or we can tra track, its, track its progress as it turns into a frost effect it's very cool um, Jax has done a super chat saying glad I could find non-binary person looks through a box of paint again was always my favourite comfort show before they took it off Netflix we're back baby we may not have the same budget but we've got the show. Pa 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 pow. Um, right, let's take a five to seven minute break. I'm going to boil the kettle and make a cup of tea. Hopefully that won't take uh, very long. Um, what are you going to do? Are you? Do you need to stretch? How's your posture? Do you need to unclench your jaw? Uh, are you too warm? Are you too cold? Are you peckish? Is there something you could do in the next five seven minutes that you uh, need to get done, or that will enhance your viewing experience uh, after the break? 
So I'm going to come back, we're going to do some more painting, and we'll just generally have a nice time. If there is something you can do, go do it. Now, if not, then uh, just enjoy this smooth jazz and a picture of my dog. I'll be back. Catch you then. Uh, be, yes, be right back, Like as I said. All right, bye.
Hi. I think that was more like an eight minute break. Goodness. How's everyone doing? How was your break? Got something in my moustache. That's fun. There we go. Um, how you doing? I made a mug of tea. Shout out to uh, Sarah Nelson's Grassmere Grass Gingerbread. The best gingerbread in the country, possibly in the world. Um, and we're back to painting a mammoth. Here it is. Um, Abby Rat Rates? Rats? I'm so sorry, Abby. Uh, I think I've got your name wrong before. It's on a super chat saying, had to call in sick with uh, a migraine today, but very glad I have you all to keep me company while I just lay here very quietly in a dark room. Migraines are no fun, Abby, and I'm sorry that you are currently battling one. I hope it clears up very, very soon and you start feeling better. Uh, because, oofed, I am... Um, I've only had two migraines in my life, and they were both just so horrible uh, that, yeah, um, hopefully no more of that, please. Right. Now. Blue, grey, feel blue. Welcome back to Non-Binary Person Looks Through a Box of Paints. Today we're looking for Deep Sea Blue, I believe it's called. There it is, I think. Is that it? No? No. That's... Yes, it is. Dark Sea Blue. There we go. Here we are. Right. This bit is a little bit rusty and it's quite fun. So... Uh, 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 uh. Marisha J has trained Watson to look and retrieve paints. Well, she can't read, and also dogs can't see as many colours as humans. So, like, while I love Watson, I don't think she'd be that well suited to the job. I think she's better off as uh, moral support, really. Right, glasses off, Johnny. Genius. We're going to start off with some do uh, dark sea blue. Not deep sea blue. Dark sea blue. Monster Noodle says, uh, recently I've been dealing with at least ooh, at least one migraine a week, and I may need to talk to my GP, but I've been given a cheeseburger and some onion rings. Um, nom, 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 nom. Sounds good. The nice it says, you don't know that she can't read. You know what? No, I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that at all. Maybe she can. Maybe she can. Right. Like I say, this isn't exactly the most. Uh, doesn't need to be. Doesn't need to be the neatest job, the best job, or even vaguely competent, really. But I'm just going to start laying down this blue, this dark sea blue. There we go. Water that down a bit more, so we can just slam it down on the base here. Because what we're going to do, as I showed you before the break, I've got a bottle of what's called liquid frost, <coughs> which is basically just a saline solution. Uh, but as it dries, it forms salt crystals and this sort of lovely hazy ice effect. It's genuinely great. Um, it's not magic, but it's magic adjacent. And I like it a lot. Um, I forgot to bring the team through, didn't I? I even put it next to the kettle. <sighs> Damn it. I remembered, then forgot. Whack Poo Brain Horse says, I'd drive a distance and pay a monetary amount for some onion rings. That's how commerce works. I do like an onion ring. I don't, like, love them. Um, can you get onion rings at Burger King? Because, like... Okay, this is a weird thing, and it's kind of a glimpse into my mind and just how long I think I've had weapons-grade anxiety. But when I was a kid, right, I've talked about this before, my family, like, my parents took us to McDonald's because that's just the place where they took us, and we played Nintendo because that's the console we had. We played Mario Brothers. Um, and we drank Coca-Cola because that was just sort of the Coke we drank. And, like, obviously, when you're a child, you don't have much of a personality of your own yet. 
and I, you know, I feel like children can often, they'll often define themselves by just the things they like. To be honest with you, so do a lot of adults. Same people who are like, Marvel is life or whatever. Um, but I was aware of the fact, I was like, I eat at McDonald's and I drink Coca-Cola and I play Nintendo games. And I had like a friend who played Sega and ate a Burger King. And I was just like, oh my God, they're all out there. There are kids out there who prefer Pepsi and Burger King and Sonic the Hedgehog to Mario. And I was just sort of aware that there were these these kids out there who were basically just like my direct antithesis because I didn't have a personality yet. And it really made me feel weird. I was like, oh my God, so, like, would they hate me? Would they hate me just because of these things? Like... It used genuinely used to squick me out a bit as a kid. It was just very alarming. Um, and I don't know why I started talking about that. What was it to do with? Haywire says, "Where did you get the frost from?" Asking for a friend. It's made by Green Stuff World. There you go. Why did I start talking about that? I can't remember. Can't remember. Catronica says, I'm low-key nervous about getting paint on the keyboard. There you go. It's happened. There's some blue paint on my keyboard now. There you go. Now you can see it. Um, don't worry. These things happen. Paint gets on keyboards sometimes. There's no point being precious about things. And also, like, it's... Now it's started to happen. It's just developing character. It's nice. Onion rings. Thank you, Catherine Mason. That's why uh, I was talking about, about the Burger King kids. Because I, I like onion rings, but there is still, I'm not even kidding you, a bit in my brain that's like, onion rings belong to the other kids. Onion rings belong to the other people. Like, all of the Burger King, Sonic the Hedgehog, Pepsi kids, they bloody love onion rings. So, like, I'll eat them and I'll be like, nice. You know, like I, I like that, but like I think because I don't order them very often, I don't order them in or anything, there is still a bit of my brain that's like, onion rings belong to the other kids. It's really weird. It's really, really weird. Like, I will bite into one and it will taste like I'm undercover. It will taste like I'm behind enemy lines. And that's so weird. It's such a specific... Sense memory. I think I think I have a vague memory of being in Burger King with my Burger King eating Sonic loving friend and eating onion rings and being like, this is weird. This is weird. And I think that's what it I think that's what it was. This is really weird. Like when I eat onion rings, I'm like, ha ha ha. I'm behind enemy lines. Isn't that strange? It's so fucking weird. Dick Scatberg says console wars were real to Johnny. No, like, no, I never, never gave a fuck about the console. Ah, no. No, I did, though. Kids gave a shit about the console wars back then, because you were either Sega or you were Nintendo. PlayStation didn't exist. Hated PlayStation when that came out. That was for fucking pretenders. But, like... Like, yeah, all kids all kids had stakes in the fucking console wars, you know? All kids were like, no, this is better. Because, like, they would they had made, or their parents had made, a financial commitment. And they wanted to feel justified in that commitment. No one wanted to be like, actually, yeah, the Dreamcast is a pile of shit. A, because it wasn't a pile of shit, it was really good. But also B, because, like, no one wants to feel like they've backed the wrong horse. So, like... I don't know. It wasn't necessarily a, a, like, I guess I was worried about what if I was wrong or what if people didn't like me. And all I had for a personality then was the, the shit I'd experienced. So, there we go. Um, Shaz the Great and Powerful has done a super chat saying, sorry to do this, but may I have encouragement to contact bee eating disorders? Um, uh, running my health finances, but I'm terrified of cont contacting them. Uh, do contact them. Like, I think if you're super chatting this, then you know it's, it's you know, the right thing to do. And I wish you very well with it. I hope it all goes okay. Um, but yeah, that sounds like a positive thing to be doing. So please do um, go do that. Consider this some encouragement. And also, um, yeah, like, 
I think we've got a very we've got a very supportive community here, and I think that's lovely. Um, and I think it's okay to ask for encouragement from said community. Um, but uh, do remember that like this is a public channel on on the internet, uh, and I I'm not saying this like to criticize or police your behavior or anything like that but just remember that like potentially anyone could see this and that that is just you're giving away a lot of yourself there i guess you're making quite a big disclosure so um super chatter discretion advised basically but again that's not a that's not a comment on you and it's not a criticism it's just a general um bit of uh of internet uh personal health and safety thing i think but as Catherine mason says you can do it so yeah good luck i know like getting in touch with people is always a horrible scary first step but it's a step worth taking so good luck genuinely and i hope it goes okay right so right on cue there comes a porn bot um so uh thank you emma for sorting out the porn bot you can see here we're actually going to push that a little bit further. You can see here, see here, that uh, I've put a bunch of blues on there. Generally speaking, aiming to be a bit lighter in the middle. Um, and the reason we're doing this is that I think hopefully you'll see when the uh, the frost stuff comes in. That it uh, it gives a lovely sort of sense of depth to the ice. Sometimes people do it the other way, where it's light at the edges and then deeper in the middle. But um, like, you can just be really rough with this, and then the well, just sort of wet blending it, and then the the frost liquid stuff kind of covers it up in a nice way. That looks good. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and then we'll um, whack some frost down on it. Team bus, it's a team bus. <laughs> the nice which says, Hugh Mammoth is looking excellent. Thank you very much. I'm quite pleased with Hugh Mammoth. I'll tell you what, I'll go get the team so you can see what, what I've... We can have a look at the scale. I'll be right back. Don't touch my stuff. Okie dokie, so. Hup. Uh, 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 uh. Um, here is my Norse team in their lovely tin. And so I had to spray some uh, matte varnish over these bases. So it's actually reduced the effect quite a lot. But you can see it gives this kind of like icy effect, and you get these crystals piling up around the feet that really look like almost like cracks uh, and I'm really pleased with how this this team came out to be honest it, here's a beer bore you can tell because it's got a plate on the front that says beer bore uh, and yeah it just looks quite fun so it's been a while since I've seen the uh, the effect that hasn't been then dumbed down by the varnish so I'm quite excited about this but yeah this is my team oh I never painted the teeth on that wolf wire Okay, that was a choice. All right, well, that happened. Hey ho, this is the team I'm running next year, next season of the league. This is the troll, no, the Yeti. I painted a lot of these on stream, so they should be familiar to some of you, but you can see like reds and blues are the other team colors. So yeah, and then we've got the, the team bus. So that's nice. Wait. Just Man Bun says everyone talking about touching their stuff is hilarious. Were you all touching my stuff? 
Mark Kerwan says, I'm still thinking about the idea of playing Warcry or Age of Sigmar as fans rioting about their Blood Bowl teams matches. I like it's one of the best ideas I think I've ever had. Thunder Cookie says no. That makes me feel like that feels like everyone was touching my stuff. I asked you not to, told you not to touch my stuff. So Um Hugh says he can't prove anything, Johnny. Yeah, fair enough. But um yeah, I just think it'd be funny. Just be like you you play a game of Blood Bowl and then if you lose, your fans are rioting harder, so you get <coughs> a bonus in Warcry or uh, Kill Team, or more time would be ideal. But um, more time, trying to get hold of a copy of more time, the books go for quite a lot. They're a complete, and they're a complete box sets, but they're selling for like five hundred pounds on eBay. And it's a bit like maybe not. The nice switch says, I actually saw someone touch, like, three things. Right. See? Hermit Prime says, we've hidden one thing. I'm disappointed in you all. <sighs> right, this is still not dry, but it's getting there. Phew, mammoth. This is mammoth. Very big mammoth. Dan Kelleher says, I have to go now. Take care, everyone. Take care, Dan. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, however much is left. Catronica says, I would love to say I've never behaved one day in my life, but I was 100% a goody two-shoes rule follower growing up. I was a... I was... Hmm. I was very... I pushed it where I could. I didn't do my homework a lot. Oh, Paul Howarth says being disappointed in me is too real right now. I didn't touch your stuff. Paul, I didn't mean you. Everyone knows Paul's all right. Chaos says, are you going to have the mammoth pulling a ridiculously tiny car like the little red wagon Charlie Brown puts, pulls around? It's, it, it's interesting, isn't it? The no switch says, when the kids would break the rules at school, it made me feel very nervous. I... Interesting. Um, I would have, I would have had you picked for a like a, a slightly naughty kid. The nice witch. Okay, so I'll show you. Monster Noodle says, "Can I touch one thing as a birthday present?" Go on then, Monster Noodle. You can touch one thing. Here is the scale of Team to Mammoth. So this is a Valkyrie next to the Mammoth. So like, the cart would actually have to be quite big, wouldn't it? Tiny cart would be quite funny. But yeah, that's what we're looking at. Still not dry, we'll wait. Aiden Folk says I was a Lisa Simpson. <laughs> Sweet Monkey Tuesday says, I accidentally garnered a reputation for good behaviour, which I use for mischief. Mwahaha. Interesting. Ah, the nice which says, I mainly got into trouble for being sarcastic and too chatty, but with rules and stuff, I was a right little swap. Okay, right, got it. Monster Noodle says, I'm going to touch the mammoth, but... I think... Who, who was it? Uh, da, 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 da. uh... Marissa J says, team climb up horns and leg a lass it up. Yeah, it could just be that this is the bus and they all hang off the bus. I think that's just easier. I don't have to make a cart that way. But yeah, that's what they do. They all fit up there. Lucas says, normal size mammoth pulling large cart, or is this an apology bus situation where the minis aren't actually in the cart? So what I would love what I would love to do is make a cart and have all the team in it, but like that's not an easy thing to carry around in London. Currently, I've got this tin. This tin goes in my bag and that's my whole team. Will this even fit in a tin? No, I'm gonna have to get a different tin. I'm, and I wanna carry the mammoth around with me because it's fun. And people, people in the league often have like a coach on the side. So this could even be their coach. I'll work it out, but I'm gonna need to get it a tin. I wonder if it'll fit sideways in a, in a, we call these, 
street tins. I know it sounds weird, because it is, but um, I need more tins. I need more tins. Um, I reckon it would fit sideways on in the, in this. So I could carry two tins. I, this is, I'll think about this later. It's fine. So here we go. Chaos says there's an STL for a little red wagon on Thingiverse that would look great filled with tiny cans of cheap lager. Oh my God, yeah. The nice says these, these tins grow up on the street. So one, one person in the league was talking about how they'd magnetize their, te their team and they were keeping it in a quality street tin. And we were like, what the fuck is a street tin? And then they posted a quality street tin and we were like, oh, the sweets. Okay, I understand. Uh, which was quite funny. So now they're just called street tins. It makes us giggle. Um, okay, if you can send me on Discord a link to that uh, little red car, I'll see about getting it made up. I'll just pop it on the back. In the meantime, I believe this is sufficiently dry for me to put liquid frost on. Sorry for hitting the mic. Let's see. Apply multiple layers and leave to dry between four to 24 hours. So strap in everyone, it's gonna be a long stream. Adam Bicknell says, do the tins look like that so strangers think you're carrying lunch and don't judge you? Nope, they were cheap and they're metal so that the minis adhere to them. On the underside, I've got my like rangefinder things, but it also means I can do this. And the team's absolutely fine. There we go. Um, my partner just got home, so Watson is very excited, so now has a squeaky toy. So that's nice. Right, here we go. Liquid Frost going on the palette. I'm David Frost. Um, okay, here we go. So, we're just going to slap this on. Or oh, it might not have dried all the way, this paint, you know. Oh well, it's fine. Just gonna slap it on. And then what we'll do is we'll start painting bases, change it up a little bit. Yeah, this paint ha hasn't completely dried, but oh well, we'll find out what that does. It'll be a fun experiment for you and for me. Um, we'll start painting bases and then we'll check in on the old the old mammoth and see how the liquid frost is taking. And we'll do extra coats in that. Hey, Wire says he's also gonna slap some on the mammoth itself so it has literal frosted tips. Tempting, isn't it? I might put some on its feet. But um, I don't often go in for like snow effects on uh, on models. In fact, this is my first ever like frost effect on a thing before. That didn't make, grammatically, you knew what I meant, but grammatically that wasn't, that wasn't the high point of my career. I'll say that much. Right, I wanna make sure I get loads on the edges here. Cool, all right. So like hopefully you can sort of see there are already some like little swirls where the, the saline solution is thicker. Um, and that should frost up quite nicely. Tell you what I'll do. Just so you can keep an eye on old Hugh. Ah, come on Hugh, we gotta get to London. It's a very specific reference to some uh, early 2000s telly. Not sorry. Um, but he'll just be sat there. We can watch that go. All right, um, cool. Let us clean our brush. <laughs> the nice which says, oh my God, is that what your partner sounds like? No, my partner does not sound like a squeaky toy. I'm pleased to say. Oh, Sarah Burke says, so I just arrived to the sounds of squeaking and my dog shut up like spring. Oh, okay. So here's what we've got. We've got some moon bases. Um, and they are currently sort of quite a bluish gray, I want to say. Um, so, which I don't hate actually, but what I want to do 
Let's get some greys out. Hello and welcome back to Non-Binary Person Looks for a Box of Paints for Specific Paints. Today we're looking for Ashen Grey. We've already got Storm Vermin for Oot. It's there, although it's quite dried up, but that wouldn't be terrible for a dry brush, would it? Um, ooh, now that's an interesting thought. Some Steel Legion Drab would go quite nicely with the blues on that. Okay. All right. I think I think think this is starting to come together. Let's do a test one. Let's do a test base. We'll take this one. This is going to be our test moon base. Moon base one. So what I'd like to do is bring back my good friend dry brush. Getting a lot of use this stream. Baddy Wrongleg says, do you attach minis to them with moonbeams? No, I use superb glue. There we go, right. Red PW says, please Johnny, Moonbase Alpha. What's Moonbase Alpha from? Is that from Transformers? I can't remember. Surely it should be Moonbase Alpha. Moonbase Alpha, I'm going to have to Google Moonbase Alpha. Moonbase Alpha. Oh, Space 1999. Got it. Thanks. Thunder Cookie's on a super chat saying, Consider the cookie base. Lead the armies of Candyland to glorious victory. Milkshake mount awaits. <laughs> that was a completely bizarre, completely bizarre super chat, and I loved it. Thank you, Thunder Cookie. Right. So. We're gonna... hurt the tip of my thumb on the weekend. That's uncomfortable. First things first, I'm gonna zoom out this window a little bit. There we go, that's a bit better. We're gonna get some ashen grey on this here b -b -b brush. And then we're gonna work it into the bristles. That's quite a dark grey. And that should be all right. And then we're just gonna dry brush it on. Very heavily, seemingly. Okay. Yeah. Certainly looks grey. So. You may think that that's done absolutely fuck all. Uh, because that's certainly how it looks. <laughs> so. Moonbase 1 was Transformers. There we go. Thank you, Lisa Hunt. Moonbase 1, not the same as Moonbase Alpha. Okay. Ah. Right, so now we've got some Steel Legion Drab. This is going to be a bit of an experiment, but let's see what we get. Oh, that is quite a bit darker than I thought it was going to be. And also I've put fucking loads on the brush. But, right... I've done quite a heavy dry brush of um, Alpha Legion, no, Steel Bat, what the fuck's it called? Steel Legion Drab. Okay. And I'm going to shade that. Um, with... Some Agrax Earthshade. Sorry if this is making naffle sense, but I'm sort of thinking out loud right here. Ang Angelic Fergus says, who comes up with all the paint names? Nerds. Nerds do. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some Agrax there. And then I'll water that down. A couple of brushes of water. Three. But I'd also like. <sighs> Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay. 
because I need this ideally to be a good accent colour I'm not sure what I'm going for here let's see Hmm. James Evans has done a super chat saying, by the way, during the break, Emma and I suggested that the Mammoth Bus theme tune could be Trunky Town. Honk times ten. Goodness me. Honk, 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 honk. Very strong. Very good indeed. Well done. Um. Okay. I think that's all right. I think if we do like a cream dry brush over the top of all of that, we should be okay. Uh, and Silent Cobb is on a super chat, but the Silent Cobb super chat is entirely silent. Thank you, Silent Cobb. That's very kind. Um, unfortunately, there is always a theme tune. Uh, always is already. Here's how we're looking, by the way. There's already a theme tune for this team, and it is Levin Poker, but it is specifically the Levin Poker cover by Corpiclani, which is a, an absolute banger. Um. But Trunky Town does it. It's it's good. It's strong. Um, Cheerful Spider says, "Apropos of nothing, except I'm." This is a super chat, by the way. Cheerful Spider says, "Super chat saying, apropos of nothing, except I'm making lunch." Does the UK have a ubiquitous cheap spices brand that you can get anywhere? In the U US, it's Tones. I guess Sch Schwartz would be ours. Yeah, it'd be Schwartz. Monster Noodle says, "Corpaclania Ace," and I don't know if I spelled that right. Uh, yes, you did. You you absolutely nailed that. That's exactly the right spelling of Corpus Clowney. There you go. Hmm. 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 So here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. We've got this base, and we've got the this color scheme. This color scheme is sort of yellow and blue and initially I wanted to do rusted metal bases which were going to have like reds and oranges in here and currently I don't know if this color scheme on the base I mean is too cold like it's quite blue which doesn't really work with the what well, is too similar to the actual color scheme on the models so I'm wondering if I should actually go a bit bolder than Steel Legion drab and do a bit of honest to goodness orange on there. Hobby friends, please tell what thing. James Evans says, What would the ice of frost effect look like on those bases? I think it would obscure a lot of the sort of dimpled detail, which already hasn't come out as strong as I would have liked. It looks quite uniform almost. Hmm. Well, I've chased most of the shade out of that crevice now, whoops. Hmm, maybe go for a rusty red, a sort of Martian look, says Chaos. Yeah, I've got like, I think I've got riser rust. I have, I've got riser rust, which does dry very sort of rusty. I'm going to try riser rust. Fuck it, why not? Why not, eh? Um... Let me put a bit more shade back in there. Okay, we'll let that dry. So we need a couple, couple of minutes to just chat, I think. Shit. Let's see how this is doing. You can see it's starting. See, ooh. See, see there? It's starting, to look, it's starting to look salty is what it starts to look like. But you almost get, especially on the edges here, you almost get these little hatch marks. It's almost like it's been scratched. Um, it's start basically it's starting to cure. We're starting to get it, which is nice. Um, might do a second coat of this. We'll see. But yeah, very exciting. Tell you what, tell you what we can do. Um, ooh, I'm gonna have a, I tell you what we can do. I'm gonna have some tea. That's what we can do. My throat's going a bit funny. Okay. 
what I'm going to do... Mm, no, stand your ground. I just wait for this to dry. I've, how many brushes have I got behind my ears now? Three. Great. Great number of brushes to have behind your ear, Johnny. Well done. Um, tuck that in there. That goes in there. That goes in there. Danilla Dragon says, stepped away for a minute. What's the riser rust for? It's for a moon base. Um, I'm doing bases for the um, for the um, Votan. And I dry brushed some Ashen Grey on here. And then I dry brushed on some Steel Legion Drab. And then I put Agrax Earthshade on it. And what it really needs is some orange, to be honest with you. I'm starting to worry about this one. I'm going to try... I'm going to try something a bit different on this. Because um, actually, this is quite a... It's not a terrible moon rock, is it? Like, it reads... That reads more like moon rock than that does right now. So I might just go straight in with riser rust on this to give it that accent colour. Let's see what we get. <laughs> well, we don't have as much depth in terms of, like, shade in there. But, oh wow, oh wow, Hannah Axelson, who never misses, has done a super chat, saying the mammoth looks so calm, you could even call it tranquil. Tranquil. Oh, it's really starting to come through now, it's really starting to read more like frost, isn't it? It's good fun. Ray PW says, I think the painted mood base would look much more appropriate without the glossy finish. Well, this is just wet. Thank, thankfully. Um, Danilla says, dry brush with riser and Washington with agra. <laughs> Wash with agrax, got it. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, here we go. And now I'm looking behind my ears and there aren't any brushes there. Faisal says you should do one that looks like an actual cookie just for the fun of it. It's well I've got I've got ones with helmets that look like actual eggs, so wouldn't be completely out of the question. Ah. Okay, rise a rust. Here we go, baby, that's too much. <laughs> rise a rust, here we go, baby. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just going to keep going until I either get scared or I'm happy. Mattress 757 says, Cargo baby! Too right. Okay, that is showing up the craters a lot more. Now let's, now let's wash it with Agrax. Already though, that's more fun. Thunder Cookie says this looks like a weirdly baked cookie. Well, your username suggests that you would know. Thunder would be a... Well, lightning, I suppose, would be a weird way to bake a cookie. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I'm also just going to shut the door a sec. One sec. Okie dokie. Let's get let's get the model out for one thing. See how this looks now. Much more fun. That's way, way, way more fun. And it's actually given me the confidence to say I think I can push that quite far. I think I can even get some Troll Slayer on there. Interesting. Interesting. That's much, much, much more fun. Um, okay. Should we still shade it? I guess we should still shade it. I mean, right. 
Look at this one. Boring. It's boring. The nice which says, oh yeah, wang some Troll Slayer on there. <laughs> I will. I will, Sarah, just for you. Yeah, I'm going to get some. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm going to. I'm fucking going to. But first, we need. We do need some Agrax in there. Oh. It's fun working things out, isn't it? Puzzles. What colour we want to paint things. Gender, sexuality. How much we owe the government in tax. That one's less fun. Oh, we don't like the shade on it, though. That looks bad. The shade just looks bad. The shade just doesn't look good. I think we just need to be harsher with the dry brush. Like, just really fucking go for it. I'm scared. I'm scared. Danilla, help. Aiden Folk says, I'm glad I'm PAYE. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Danilla says, hmm. Yeah, right. Right. Tell you what. Because the thing is, right, this is just a dry brush over the initial primer. I can reprime these anytime. Nathan says maybe an orange contrast or something similar rather than Agrax. I do have Magma Droth Flame. Tell you what, let's... That's worse. That's worse. <sighs> right, where's the Troll Slayer? This is interesting. This is a fun learning experience. I thought this is. I thought these bases were going to be a piece of piss, and I think, I think once we've got the um, once we've got the method down, it's going to be fine. But for now, hmm, this is tricky. Ow! Ow! Denella says, water down some rage shade. That's a point. Let's try that. Zega Genesis says, have you tried cream yet? You know you're going to end up there eventually. No, I haven't. But at least let me pretend I'm not just going to dry brush everything cream. Right, where's the rage shade? Rage shade. Lucas says, the problem is the deeper parts should be darker because they're in shadow. Maybe prime them with something darker first and then highlight the lighter parts. That's a point, yeah. Yeah, because otherwise we're relying on shade to get in there and it doesn't look good currently. Right, let's try this. I think may have watered that down too much. Okay, right, tell you what, <laughs> now that looks okay. <laughs> well, okay, well that, so that is just, you're right, these need to be primed, these need to be primed dark and brushed up to something else. Yeah, I need to prime these black. That's what I need to do. Chaos says, an approach for bases I found very effective is just fucking smashing up some rocks with a hammer and gluing those on. I've done that before. Yeah, prime black, dry brush orange. I think that's it. I think that's the answer. Well, we've solved that conundrum. That's good. Let's check in on our mammoth friend. <coughs> Here we go. It's it's very much it's hard to show you on camera, but there you go. 
See how that looks like there's depth to it and how it's all kind of scratched up? I like it, it's fun. Might do a second coat of this off camera later. Who knows? Um, yeah, those bases. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that needs to be black and then dry brushed orange. Okay, well that's fun and that'll look different. Maybe a red oxide or brown primer, then an orange dry brush. Yeah, red oxide would do if I owned one. Um, or I could get the dry brush out. Not the dry brush, the airbrush. I'll work something out. I might just do black and then orange and see how that works, Argenta. Okie dokie, right. Let's, this is be a fun and exciting final step on our mammoth, won't it? Let's paint the edge of the base. Always fun. a little annoying. Oh, did I read Aiden Folks' super chat? Asked oh, Cyborg Penguin. Good point. Aiden Folks, yeah, I think I did. Or I read it and it made me laugh, but I don't know if I read it out loud. Aiden Folks is on super chat saying, to make your taxes a little more complicated. Thank you, Aiden. Okay. Just like... With the mini on there, I don't hate it, you know. I'm going to try... I'm going to try one... Right. Here's what I'm going to do. We could paint it dark brown and then dry brush the orange. I'm going to do... just one dry brush on this. and I'm going to do just a light Troll Slayer orange dry brush just straight onto this grey. And I'm just going to see what we come out with. I've just got a, like a... Just curious now, really, more than anything. Because, like I said, that primer is quite blue, which would make this quite a strong contrast. Let's see. I just want to see what we can... It just doesn't seem very bright. It doesn't seem bright at all. Nathan says, I reckon maybe a darker red. A lighter orange could end up being too similar to the colour scheme in the Mini. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks... Right now, that looks bad. So let's get some red on there. Okay, we've got like 20 things that we can experiment with right here. Let's just keep, just keep having fun. Whee! Uh, it's making me feel very odd. Okay, let's brush on a darker red. Is that a dark? That's a dark red. Oh, we also talked about using just... Hmm. 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 Give me a sec. Hmm. 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 Where's my bag? Hmm. There you go. Hmm. I bought these the other day. I'm not going to use Imperial Fish, but I do have a Magma Dross flow. Just want to see what a contrast paint would do on these. <sighs> I 
And then I'll also... Ooh, that's bright. I'm also going to dry brush some... Um... Wow, look at this shit. Wow, that's wild. No one said I couldn't paint it orange and then dry brush cream on it. Oh God, it's quite a lot. Yes, yes, that looks bad right now. Let's see what happens when it dries a bit, I guess. Interesting. I feel like I've completely lost it. Comple yeah, I feel like I've absolutely, absolutely lost it right now. It couldn't be further from what I originally envisaged. <laughs> Just gonna let that dry. Let's just dry brush a red on here. The dry brush is behind that ear. Is everyone okay? I feel very weird. <laughs> okay. 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 This is a darker red. Hello. Oh, we don't hate that. We don't hate that at all, actually. May have overdone it just then. <laughs> yes, Mr. Arnold, I think we're back in business. Yeah, okay. Now I wonder. Okay, now you're all going to laugh at me, but I think we all know what's coming. Bell sand. <laughs> Baddy Wrongley's got so excited. Uh, just typed SNAD in uh, all in caps. Let's see what we come out with, you know? This might be it. This might be the one. This might be the one. This might be it. This might be what we end up with. Nathan says, everybody take a shot. They said it. Hey, it's a good paint. It's a good paint, Nathan. Right, very lightly, Johnny. Ooh, that's, that needs wiping off a bit more. Very gently now. And it looks chalky and weird. Oh, are they coming back round to it? They might be, you know. Let's have a look. Let's put a, put a model on there. That might be it, you know. What do we think, team? I think that's the one. Phew! Caden Cannot uh, has done a super chat saying, Got a job at International Domicile of Popular Breakfast Food and cannot wait to subscribe to Insert Plug for Patreon. Oh, you mean www.patreon.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini? What a great thing to subscribe to if that's something you want to do with your hard-earned money that you have earned at International Domicile of Popular Breakfast Food. <laughs> that's it, look. That's it. There we go. We've got it. We got there. Fucking hell. Right, well then. 
Well then, Hugh says there have been a lot of U-turns today. Have you considered a career in politics? <laughs> Don't threaten me with a terrible time, Hugh. Let's not discount the Magma Droth flame. <laughs> That's a no. That's a no on Magma Droth flame, isn't it? Might just have to paint that one rather than dry brushing it. Oh god, we'll come back to that one. We've got many others to dry brush first. So now we can start doing a batch. I think my test ones may just have to be primed and redone. Refined and redone. Nathan says, Johnny, the Magma Droth flame base looks like a damp pepperoni. It really does, yeah. Really does. That's haunting. Haunting. Right. Onwards. Is there any reason I have to dry brush this red on? Could I just paint this red on? I think I can. I think I might. It would be a lot... It would be a lot, um... Harsher. Not harsher, but more intense. But I don't think that's a bad thing. Hmm... Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna. Well, let's tr let's see. Let's take one of the ones that we would otherwise have to reprime. Nathan says worth a try. Nathan, you're so good to me. Thank you. Right then. That goes behind the ear. Try not to forget that, Johnny. I saw somebody tweet yesterday saying that. Um, learning a language for an adult is hard because learning a language is hard anyway. And also, you know, there's a lot of talk we do about the elasticity of a child's brain versus that of an adult. But uh, they also said that it's difficult because uh, it makes people feel stupid. Like they're getting a lot of things wrong and they have to do that in order to then advance. Uh, and it makes them feel vulnerable. Um, and I think that's that's how I feel when I'm trying to do something creative, specifically with painting, and it's and trying things and it's not working. Like, the reason I feel like I ever so slightly lost my marbles then was that I was out of my comfort zone. I didn't know what I was doing. I think painting this on is going to be just fine, actually. So let's paint all of these. Um, it's just weird how the brain works, isn't it? Oh, that's the no, that's the one that we've done that we like. Okay. I need to shut the door again. There we go. Hey wire says brains suck. I'd I'd rather have one than not, but yes, broadly I agree. I'm also gonna put some music on in my ears, or rather change the music that's in my ears. Then I can just calm my shit. Sure, that's a nice playlist, we'll have that. Okay. Paul Howard says, I think I need to remember to make mistakes more often or at least get comfortable with them. It's not easy though, is it? It's the same reason, you know, people will often give up on something if they're not good at it first time. Because, like, if you're not good at something and you don't see yourself improving or you don't think it's going to be fun to try and improve, it's very easy to be like, that's not for me. And I think, you know, you know, familiar is comfortable. But then I think that also leads to people discounting what they're good at because for them it's not hard. Do you know what I mean? When people are like, oh, this is so good. It's like, well, it's not hard for me, so it doesn't count. That's something a lot of people I know are very guilty of doing, where they'll produce something amazing. And then you try and compliment them, and they're like, well, no, that doesn't apply because it's easy for me. It's the idea that the act of creation has to be hard, otherwise it doesn't have merit. It's weird.
I think that's why I gave up on bouldering, because I wasn't good at it, and I felt awkward and clunky doing it. Turns out obeying the colour wheel is just a good idea, isn't it? We knew red was a good idea. Well, Nathan knew it was a good idea. And I had to be told. Ah, this is nice. No thoughts, only red paint. That sounds ominous. Didn't mean it like that. And yet here we are. Start moving some of these back over there. Uh, oops. Magma Droth Flame 1. I'm gonna paint you for sure. <sighs> Sarah says, sometimes these streams are an eye-opener for my mental health. I've given up on so many things because other people are better and made me feel silly for trying. Time to try something new. Yes, Sarah! Go out there, find something, be bad at it, enjoy being bad at it, get a bit better at it, enjoy the feeling of growth. Feel your brain forging new neural pathways. It's fucking weird, but it's also really fun. I think that's, that's partly why I'm trying to set aside space for me to write more recently, is that when I do it, it's so scary, because I'm like, I'm writing, I'm trying to write a... I'm not... I'm not... I'm trying to write a nov novel. And it's scary to even admit that, because... I feel like in saying that, it, I'm saying I think my writing is good enough to be a novel, but anyone can write a fucking novel. Like, that's not to be like everyone's got a novel inside them. No, I'm sure there are lots of people out there who shouldn't write a novel, but just because I've, I've grown up reading them and people have them published professionally and all that kind of stuff, that doesn't disqualify me from trying to write one. Or even finishing one, and never showing it to anyone, or sharing it with friends on Google Docs, or, or trying to get it published, you know, any of those things. There's a whole gamut of possibilities you can do with a novel having written one, but there's something about sitting down with just me and my laptop, and this thing that nobody has read except for me, ever. It's scary to go, and now I'm going to write more of this, you know? Melody Williams says, Johnny, are you participating in NaNoWriMo? No, I am. Um, I have been writing this and a different <coughs> novel um, on and off for a while now. And I'm just trying to get more disciplined with it recently because I enjoy it when I'm doing it. And it's it makes me feel nice, um, even though it's scary. But no, I'm not going to do NaNoWriMo because that feels like more of a grind than I can commit to. But, you know. But basically, I'm blocking out a bit of time a day. Uh, I wrote today for a length that felt about right, and I'd done 500 words, and that's plenty. You know? So, I'm not overthinking it, basically. Blah. Aiden Folk says, outside of a dog, a book is a man's best friend. 
inside of a dog is too dark to read. <laughs> or it's too hard to read. I like that joke, that's very good. Painting bases, painting bases. Basing is my least favourite part. Because I don't feel like I have creative ideas that are any good. And I find the execution of them tedious. Which I'm sure even that we could unpack in some regard. And I can't believe it turns out the answer was pale sand all along. <laughs> Melody Williams says, is there a way to dunk the minis into paint? Yeah. I mean, if you, like, I know that, for example, the Warhammer team that does the terrain, they just have a bucket of of shade, of, like, Agarax Earth shade of, of a wash, and they just dunk it in there because it's quicker than applying it with a brush. Um, you could just dip a paint in there. The problem is getting, making sure the coverage isn't so much, so thick, that it, uh, obscures the details because if you just slop a load of paint on you'll cover up features that are meant to be there um, which is why I think I, I think an airbrush is a better way to basically take that because if I was using an airbrush this had been done this would have been done 10 minutes ago because that is just like just flinging it on um, let's do the big one big one doesn't actually need that much attention, which is why it doesn't have many holes in it, because uh, the base of the model that's going on it is a big rock. Or rather, the bottom of that model. All right. Nathan says, a classic Games Workshop hero, rock. Or was that a classic Games Workshop hero, rock? So has anyone watched any good spooky films this month? I haven't watched a single one and I feel bad about it because I love watching horror films and I love Halloween. Hugh says pale sand is rough, but Martian sand is rouge. Hugh, you're good. You're the Hannah Axelson of being called Hugh. There, I said it. Oh no, Nick Green says the new Halloween film, which was so bad. Oh no. Ray PW says, closest I've come is Ellen's playthrough of Poppy Playtime. What is Poppy Playtime? Is it a haunted doll kind of scenario? Because I played whatever that fucking horror game involving basically a Furby was called. And that was plenty for me. Oh, Aiden folks rewatched Event Horizon. Yes, Aiden. That film's great. Oh, no, tell a lie. I've watched Alien Covenant. <laughs> I actually had fun. I had fun watching that. It's not good, but I had fun watching it. Lisa Hunt says, not really a horror film, but we rewatched Final Destination 2 and had an excellent time. I think that counts. Thunder Cookie says, I'm a coward. The worst coward. I can't even watch the Prey stream because the mimics terrify me. The worst I watched was an advert for car insurance. The mimics are horrible. I don't blame you. But hey, we're going on to the cheerful exploits of a Plague Tale Innocence next, so it'll be nice to welcome you back into the arms of Presani Chiodini. Mm -mm 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 -mm. T 
two more bases to paint red. <sighs> two more to do, and then we'll do a bit of dry brushing. And then we'll call it a night, I think. I came this close to ending the stream because I didn't know what to do with the bases. Thank goodness to thank goodness for just trying the colour red. Eh? Might slap a bit more frost on old uh, old Hugh Mammoth as well. Right. Yeah, that's all the bases painted red. Oh, uh, Vanton has opinions about a Plague Tale in a sense. Interesting. I think I played a tiny bit of it for preview at Eurogamer, but I don't think I made a video about it. I may have had to play it for capture. I'm not sure, but... <sighs> okay. Uh, where is a good brush? There's a good brush, the one I was just using. Where is the Liquid Frost? Here is the Liquid Frost. Put some of this back on the palette. Here is how this is looking. As you can see, it's kind of frosty, but not like mega frosted. So I'm just going to slap some more on. It does say to leave it to dry. It does, yeah, say leave it to dry for four to 24 hours, but um, it's, it's text on a bottle. Literally cannot stop me doing this. So, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to slap some more on in a slightly haphazard way. Oh no, I got some on the elephant's foot. The elephant's foot? Mammoth's foot. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll let that dry as well. I'm genuinely quite pleased with that mammoth. That's good. Okay. Dick Scatberg says, I played, tale about, I played Plague Tale about a month ago and I also have opinions. What have you people signed me up for? This is going to be weird. Right, dry brush is behind my ear. This is what we did by dry brushing it on and then dry brushing on pale sand. Let's see what we got with just having painted it on and then dry brushing on pale sand, I guess. A questionable time, says Emma Benton. That's what you signed me up for. Okay. Rafi Doggy says, a lovely stroll through the French countryside, right? Hmm. I am. Hmm. Suspicious. What's the word? Emma Benton says, oh no, I've just remembered the beginning of the game, oh no. Oh wow, this is going to be interesting. Okay, thanks everyone. Fun. Okay, right. Pale sand, baby. Aiden Folk says, this is like Loli's complaining that we made her play Alien Isolation. You all literally voted for it. <coughs> you suggested it, then voted for it. Fucking alien isolation. Okay, here we go. That's much better, isn't it? Look at that. I'll repaint. I'll redo that one. Well, that's fun. That's good. Okay.
Yep, 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 yep. Ah, uh, what fun. Painting! Ah, uh, let's just double check that we like what we're doing. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Sorry. Yep, 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 yep. It's quite nice varying the amount of pressure as well. Cool! Just Man Bun says, so why was red chosen? It's a good accent colour to the colour scheme I've got. It just works well in there, basically. So that is why, my friend. Pale sand, pale sand, pale sand. Okay. Lillian LePame says, it wouldn't take much to make it look like a chaos flesh planet, would it? It would not. It would not. Also, I hope I got your turn in right. I worry every single time. And I think I will always worry for the rest of my days. That one was quite haphazard. But hopefully it will mellow out as it dries. I'm sure it will. It's fine. Nice Rich says, Reet, I have to go. Thanks for the stream, Johnny. Take care, pals. Practice radical kindness. Eat at least one vegetable. Unclench your jaw. Those are great, great tips. Take care, the Nice Witch, and have a lovely uh, rest of your time off work. Um, the Nice Witch streams on Twitch. Uh, and I think her streams are fucking great. I watched them myself. I watched them when I was ill recently, and it made me feel a whole lot better. So if you want to join in the fun, it's twitch.tv forward slash the nice witch. T-H-E-E, -E, nice witch. So there. Yep. <laughs> Corvus Albright says, I have unclenched my vegetable. Okie dokie. Hugh's off. Take care, Hugh. Thank you for the many excellent puns. That's the big base on which the honking great rock man will go. So I need to paint up his moon rock and that will be fine. <sighs> Here's how we're going. Uh, the original one can stay in. It's all right. It's not as bright, but that's all right. Save myself the work. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, we're almost halfway. Let's get all of the ones that need dry brushing out. Shay Williams says, "Thank you for having a stream today. I really needed. I really need some kind of distraction. I'm sorry to hear it, Shay." But I'm very glad to be streaming and providing said distraction. Whatever's going on, I hope you're all right, uh, broadly speaking, and that things look up soon. Oh, I like a stream where we get loads done. 20 bases and an entire mammoth with base? Canal. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> or is it? Believe in yourself, Johnny. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> Believe in yourself. Also trust yourself when you say something, hey? Oh, I like that one. That's fun.
being slightly uneven with this has been really is really fun as well in terms of the dry brush. Oof. Yeah, motoring now, aren't we? Right. Oh god, that that is quite tryptophobic, isn't it? Blah, blah. I don't have tryptophobia, but I understand that people do. Boop. That one's overdoing it. Oh well, the only way out is through. <laughs> there you go. Proper moon base, that one. Oops. The annoying thing is I don't have any super glue at the minute. Well, I, I did have some, but it fucking gummed up and dried out. So, um... I'm going to need to wait to glue all these things down, which is vaguely irritating. But I'll tell you what we can do. So I'm nearly done with these bases. The last thing I'll do on stream is I'll do the rock on the big rock man. And then I'll, uh, I'm going to chip on. As my partner's got a couple of friends around and... Uh, I think I've not met one of them, so I don't want to be rude. But also, I think the other one's really cool. So, I'm going to go say hi. <laughs> and I'm going to show off the mammoth again. Yes, Paul Health. Do not worry. Mammoth is just there, and we'll be getting their moment in the sun. By sun, I mean LED lamp. Two bases to go. Last one. There we go. Right, wash the dry brush off because we don't need to use the big one. Again, we'll use the little one for this. Marissa J says the brush movements are mesmerizing slash satisfying. Good, I'm glad. I know the streaming, the painting streams are less popular than video game streams because people really like watching people play video games, but I like the kind of... A, I like having four hours blocked out every single week for me to paint. That's just a nice thing for me because uh, I love painting. But um, also, I don't know, I feel like it offers something just chill and it's satisfying to see a process, I think, sometimes. Anyway, right. Martin says, does that poor, poor keyboard not get covered in paint? Yeah, it does, Martin. Slowly but surely, yes, it does. Oops, that's the wrong size brush. But oh well. Hmm. Hey, why says painting streams definitely feel more social. I hadn't considered that aspect, really. Aiden says, it's interesting because you used to keep it covered up. Yeah, but then basically people would just yell at me to cover it up all the time. And it just sort of in the end, I was just like, I don't, I've stopped caring. Okay. Oh, this is nerve wracking though, this bit. 
Well, this is why I hate basing a lot of the time. It's like it feels like going back in next to something you spent loads of time on. And Oh, God. I, I honestly meant to paint this bit at the same time as the rest of the model, but I forgot. <laughs> Martin says, I did not know I had what, wandered, waded into a long debate. I will not surface this again. No, I'm mostly kidding. I just... Um, Every now and then, because it's a very caring community, but every now and then it reaches a point where if I'm not doing something, everyone's like, watch out, do you need to be doing X? And it goes from baby, well, it goes from sort of caring into coddling, and it makes me feel weird. So I get petty about it, <laughs> basically. Puffle Master says, watch out, you need to be doing breathing. Well, guess what, Puffle Master? The lungs are going off. Thanks. No, I'm still breathing. It's involuntary. <laughs> and I didn't want to do a bit where I held my, held my breath because um, it doesn't feel nice. But I enjoyed that gag. <laughs> <sighs> Okie dokie. Gonna leave this to dry for a sec and then. Oh, I was painting off camera again. And then uh, we're gonna dry brush it and then that'll be that. And that'll be our stream for today. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, that was a good one, wasn't it? Ah. Haywire says, you said it's involuntary. Well, now it isn't for me. Curse you. Sorry, Haywire. As long as ne nobody thinks about the exact position of their tongue in their mouth or how big it is, we'll be okay. Do not, under any circumstances, think about exactly where your tongue is in your mouth. Yes, here they come. Valley wrong list says, Johnny, damn it. <laughs> Have fun, everybody. <laughs> oh, we do have fun. Ray PW says, my tongue is too big. And here's how this is, the frost is coming along. There you go, it's working quite nicely. Uh, so yeah, there's our, there's our mammoth. Cyborg Penguin says, I take back my bless you. That's fair. So there we go. Yeah, here's our, here's our team bus for my uh, Norse, Norse team. And uh, once this dries, I'll dry brush some uh, pale sand onto it very gently. This is going to be scary. And then that's our stream. Shows the Great and Powerful has done a super chat saying, Have I ever told you how much I love you, Johnny? <laughs> Thank you, Shaz. Especially at this time when others may be feeling different. Paul Howard says, uh, thank you for the stream. I've got to be away. Late as all. Stay safe. Have fun. Take care, Paul. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day. To be fair... I'll be away in a few minutes anyhow, because it's starting to, uh, we're starting to get towards the end of the stream time, sort of. I mean, I've, I've, I'm, I've run out of things to, to paint, and uh, I would like to start my evening. So, as soon as this red's dried, I'll dry brush it, and then we could all go about our, our business. Here we bloody go! Come on, small dry brush. Oh, 
Wow, small dry brush, you're great. You're so different to big dry brush. You get in all the small places. Why didn't I pick you up before? This is great. Holy shit. I love you, small dry brush. Is this why I have disliked dry brushing? I just didn't have the right size brush. Seems that way. Right. Fucking great fun. There you go. So, we have today. We've done quite a bit. Emma Benton says, can I go about other people's business? Mine sounds exhausting. If you must, Emma, but be respectful and take off your shoes. Um, so, today, we have uh, done all of these bases for the, the Egg Fellows, and I think they look quite nice. Um, and we have also painted an entire entire mammoth, which is no small feat. Ha ha! It's a mammoth. Lillian says, is that a small GW dry brush? Yes, it is. Uh, so there we go. Look, there's a small fellow on a moon planety base moon base. Uh, and then, of course, uh, here is a GD mammoth. There we go. Um, Corvus Albright has done a super chat saying, pro painting stream haiku for pro painting stream haiku time. Love a good paint stream. Myriad haiku topics. Chatty LSPs. Well, there you go. That is, that's why we do what we do, everybody. Not just for this mammoth, not just for the joy of painting, but for the haikus. So yeah, thank you all so much for joining me on this paint stream. It feels like it's gone quite quickly, actually. Um, possibly because I'm knocking off 25 minutes before I, uh, I often do, but hey ho. Sometimes you just gotta know when to call a paint stream. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, I'll be back on Thursday with another video game stream. That's in two days' time. Um, I'm not sure what I'm playing just yet, but uh, on Saturday there will either be another episode of Prey, if that's where you are in uh, the Presny Chiarini's series, uh, or there'll be a episode one of a brand new series playing uh, Plague Tale, A Plague Tale Innocence. Um, so yeah, that's that's me for now. There's some other bits going live this week as well, so look out for those. Um, Thank you so much for watching. Patreon.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini is my Patreon. If you did want to subscribe and support me directly through that website, that would be great. But thank you for your direct support through this website, YouTube. Um, thank you for watching and chatting and super chatting and just generally being lovely. Uh, this has been a very nice time, so I will catch you uh, later on this week. Um, until then, take care, have fun, uh, be safe, and uh, have fun. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs>